one and all to this international webinar on quality and safety assurance in the hotel industry during and post covid-19 pandemic a very warm welcome to respected dr parag kalkar dean faculty of commerce and management savitribai phule pune university mr tarun thakral ceo la meridian pune shri maloji raji chatrapati honorary secretary aism society shri nikhil kanse member aism society and dr sonali jadhav principal of aism college of hotel management and catering technology on behalf of savitri udai pune pune university faculty of commerce and management and aism college of hotel management and catering technology i dr milan peshwe extend a warm welcome to all the dignitaries and participants to this international webinar We have more than 850 participants registered for this webinar, but due to limited capacity of the Zoom platform, we have to broadcast this webinar live on YouTube for all the participants to witness it. So there would be roughly about 50 odd participants on the Zoom platform, and rest all will be viewing us live on YouTube live. We are already streaming live on YouTube. Let me just give us a quick introduction. In the current situation, hospitality industry is experiencing the paradigm shift in its role, and will have to elevate its system and processes to make a great comeback post lockdown. So we are uh, gradually coming out of the lockdown period now, and the hospitality industry, being a great contributor to the economy of the country, will have to play a major Hello. role. Will have to play a major role in this. The theme of the webinar will highlight the issues pertaining to quality and safety. Me at the part of it. Sorry. I'll, yeah. The theme of the webinar will highlight the issues. The theme of the webinar will highlight the issues pertaining to quality and safety and measures that the industry will have to take to reassure their commitment towards the guest. Hope this webinar brings a great knowledge sharing platform for all of us. Now I welcome Dr. Parag Kalkar, Dean of Commerce and Management, Savitri Bai Phule Pune University, to address the audience. Over to you, Dr. Kalkar. very good morning and thank you milin for giving me an opportunity to share my thought process today morning with all the gathering i would like to congratulate uh, uh, dr sonali madam principal of aissms for hosting this uh, seminar and you know that the need of the hour is getting highlighted with more than 850 participant have been responded to uh, in short span of time so i would like to congratulate your team for organizing such a uh, app seminar what you care it's a point of time that we should address these issues and discuss these issues the topic is also webinar is very correct that quality and safety assurance in the hotel industry post covid uh, i would like to first welcome uh, shri maloji raje chatrapati tanay jadhav nishank keli dr surbhi jain chairman board of studies of uh, hotel management then our uh, panelists uh, mr chef parvinder bali shrisha chandra mr prabhat shukla and gretan rodrix will be joining for the panel discussion so all of them have gathered together i think from national and international uh, uh, areas who will be highlighting on this uh, important topic see we have to see this world i think on savitri uh, on behalf of savitri bai phule pune university i would like to welcome all the participants panelists and the organizing team for this morning to deliberate on this issue the first impact has very drastically on this hotel and hospitality industry we have to see the world in two verticals the first vertical is before covid 19 and the second vertical is after covid 19 i think the hospitality industry has suffered more because the traveling has been stopped the business travel has been stopped i think events have been stopped i think we have to see the world in the different context after uh, post covid 19 what is that new normal we are talking about that wearing a mask will be a new normal using sanitizer will be a new normal i think every hotel at the gate you may have to install sanitizer spray that will be a new normal hand washing facility at every corner that will be a new normal we have to organize meeting i think hotel and hospitality industry has to look for hosting the meetings and conferences using this kind of technology what you are using right now 
So there will not be a allowed to have a meeting of more than 100 people or 50 people at one point of time. So this industry now... I think uh, we have lost Dr. Kalpar. Sir, can you hear us? Okay. So a lot of issues and challenges before the industry, I think. If you can see an other side from the panel side, I think we can see that uh, there are a lot of chefs from international chefs are also involved in continental hotels. Chefs from Nepal and uh, various parts of India. Even the staff, hotel staff is from all over India. Most of them must have traveled back to their native place. It's a challenge for all of them to bring all them together to start hotel in a full operation. Again, the cost of operation, safety, and this may be more challenging in days to come. So I think this thought process, this two hours will be more fruitful for all of us to get us insight how we can come out and how we can handle this new normal. There will be many challenges. We can have the food safety, food regulation, new, uh, I think we have to have new regulations to handle these customers when you are coming to the hospital temperature checking and so many regulations will come on the industry. It may dip down in their profitability or uh, increase the operating cost of hotel industry. Even food also, we are not uh, taking any food from outside, readily cooked food from outside. So I think they have to create a confidence among the people. Food is equal safety as it is at your home. So it will take a six months to year time for getting them in fully operational. I think they can revive. They have to face these challenges. And this thought process in this webinar will help all of us to give an insight how we can come out of this. So I again welcome on behalf of Savitri Bhai Pune Pune University to everybody to this webinar and I wish the webinar all the success. Thank you very much. Over to you, Milin. Am I audible to all? Yeah. Yes. Okay, now I welcome the first speaker of the day, Mr. Tanej Jadav, to express his views on Six Sigma, a continuous improvement methodology for eliminating defects in the process of service. Mr. Jadav is a senior process developer, uh, development engineer at Metronic, Montreal, Canada. He's a graduate in mechanical engineering from Savitri Bhai Pune, Pune University, and a master's in industrial and systems engineering from Arizona State University and has acquired a black belt in Six Sigma. I request uh, Mr. Jadav to address the audience now. Over to you, Tane. <clears throat> Thank you, Milan, for, uh, for that wonderful, uh, wonderful introduction. I'm not quite used to uh, introductions uh, like that yet. Um, but um, let me first get to my screen. Um, can you guys see my screen right now? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. OK. Uh, am I on the, can you see my slides? We could see that, yes. Okay, perfect. Well, um, it's a privilege and an honor to be able to present to, to the whole hotel industry and uh, also um, and at an event that is organized by my old alma mater. So with that, I, I wanna briefly introduce myself. So I think Milan already covered my education um, so I'll, I'll just quickly go over some of my work experiences. I, um, I, I, I have worked in Volkswagen India in Pune at the Chakan facility in Precision and Robotics India before I left for the United States for my master's in industrial engineering that I did at Arizona State University, which is in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, some more, the more interesting facts about me is, uh, I love playing tennis. I like traveling like any other millennial, uh, who has Facebook and Instagram, but I actually like traveling for traveling. Um, I've listed sarcasm as my hobbies and I'm sure uh, my mother would agree with that. Um, as Milan stated, I have a black belt, but there's a minor clarification. My black belt is in design for Six Sigma. Um, but I also have a yellow belt and lean Six Sigma, both from Medtronic. Uh, but what makes me sort of a subject matter expert on this is um, industrial engineering as a whole um, covers all the tools in depth that Six Sigma uses and, and more. Um, basically, industrial engineering started becoming popular after the 2008 crisis. Uh, when industries started realizing that they are 
they have a lot of waste in their system they're creating a lot of scrap or they're losing a lot of money unnecessarily just by be just by not being fiscally conservative or not having good systems in place um and when i was just about graduating or still in school this this is kind of what led me to pursue a masters in industrial engineering because i saw an opportunity um with that i'm going to start with six sigma and some of its history and um i'm going to try to make it as fun as possible uh, um i i i hope you enjoy the presentation so six sigma the six sigma methodology was basically developed by motorola in 1986 by doc by one dr michael harry um he was a senior staff engineer at motorola now fun fact about motorola is that it had a lot of sites in in tempe arizona which is where arizona state university is built so a lot of these people who worked on these teams um are actually professors at at arizona state university so i got to learn from a couple of people who were a part of this team that developed this methodology early in uh, early in the 1980s um it is based on edward deming's concept of process variation edward deming was basically a statistics professor he was hired by toyota and he went to toyota and toyota had the concept of lean and he helped he also de helped develop statistical techniques that eventually led to the toyota production system uh, which became sort of a gold standard in the automotive industry and toyota started basically killing companies like ford and general motors in the united states by offering high quality products at really low cost um and that is what triggered the whole industry to look at this methodology some of the early adopters and more popularly known adopters of this technique are ge dow chemical honeywell whirlpool um and this is um why we do six sigma is sort of like um this third line will give you an idea of why companies adopted it and why it became popular so among the fortune 500 companies a total savings of around 400 billion dollars has been achieved because of either directly or indirectly through uh launching a program of six sigma in 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 those industries um this number is from a paper that was written in 2012 so this is between 1987 to 2012 so when when i was asked to do a demic or a six sigma webinar um and related to the hotel industry i started with a literature search um something funny that happened or maybe not so funny is uh, the first paper that i saw or was from a conference um that was held in a little known province in china called wuhan <laughs> i'm sure everyone knows wuhan now but uh the first six sigma paper on hospitality that i found online was from a conference in wuhan so that's just something interesting and unrelated uh but one paper that i really really liked um was based on a program that starwood launched um which goes over how much cost savings they they were able to achieve it goes over why why they started to pursue six sigma in the uh, around 2008 this is before airbnb came into the picture so i'm guessing it was a recession that drove them into looking at techniques that would make them more operationally um efficient and they were able to save 100 million dollars from 2006 till the time this paper was written around 2000 or or rather in in just that one or two years time frame so um six sigma before we understand six sigma let's think about uh what what a process is and what process variation is so anything that generates an output can be considered as a process so typically in my world um for in medtronic where we make medical devices a process can range from our clinical process or a manufacturing process supply chain process um it could be anything um in the in the case of the hospitality industry it can be something like an uh, overnight stay in a hotel or the production and delivery of a of a pizza through dominos so if you've ordered pizza through dominos recently 
you'll see that they have a tracking system in place where they tell you when the pizza is being baked, uh, when, when it's being filled with all your toppings and when it's being shipped. So you get, you sort of, that, that is the perfect example of a process and what a process flow looks like. Process variation is basically any variation in that output. So for example, the delivery time of a, of a pizza. Now the delivery of a time of a pizza, it's not gonna be constant. I know we say 30 minutes or free, uh, but any process will have a, a large distribution. So it can range from five minutes all the way up to an hour or more, depending on multiple factors. And that spread of values of time is what a distribution is. So I, I think everyone can sort of in their mind visualize what a distribution is by now. Six Sigma basically comes from uh, the fact that if a process, uh, if six standard deviations of a process lie within an allocated time window, then you have a Six Sigma process. So for example, in the pizza delivery case, if the customer accepts the order to be delivered from time zero minutes to 30 minutes, that becomes your spec limit. So in this picture, if you look at the dotted lines, think about the two dotted lines as zero minutes and 30 minutes. So you can see that this, that a centered Six Sigma process will always, almost always ensure that you deliver within, six, within 30 minutes. Whereas a Three Sigma process, which is the one in green, um, you can see that a portion of the distribution or a portion of those values are outside the 30 minute window. And a two sigma process, which is, which basically again means that two standard deviations of your process are within that window. So you can see a huge portion of your, of your values for that time delivery are outside the 30 minute acceptable range to the customer. So that's the simplest way you can sort of imagine a process and what process variation is. But Okay, so that is a process, that is process variation, but what exactly is Six Sigma? Six Sigma is a methodology, as I mentioned. It is nothing, it is not too complicated, and I, I assure you, you'll find out as we walk through a very simple example. Uh, you don't need to know a lot about statistics. Um, a little bit of statistics is, is, is important, but I think most of us have studied concepts like averages, standard deviations, medians in, in high school. So if you know that much, or if you can read up and learn just that much, um, you're well equipped to do a Six Sigma project from a statistics point, point of view. Um, now, as I mentioned before, a Six Sigma process is really like a very tight variation process. So basically all your values lie around a certain mean. And when you have a Six Sigma process, it translates into 3.4 defects per million. So imagine um, you're, you're, a, you're manufacturing something, um, you're making, say you're making, uh, you have a process which is simply cutting a hole through, through a plate. Now, if, you're, if the diameter of that plate is 10 centimeters, if you produce a hole of 11 centimeters, it's basically a defect. If you have a Six Sigma project uh, process of cutting that hole, it basically means that only 3.4 times out of 1 million, you will find that your hole is either bigger or larger than the specified value. Six Sigma basically um, has um, five stages. Um, the five stages are the ones that you can see on the screen. Um, and Six Sigma is often called, also called DMAIC process. Now DMAIC stands for, for define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. In each of these stages, the, the teams and the stakeholders get together and perform certain kinds of activities. Um, for example, in the define phase, um, you define the problem. In the measure phase, you measure your output in question. In analyze phase, you look at all the factors that are affecting your output. And finally, in the improved phase, you actually go in and implement all the solutions or you manage those factors that you found were the most important in your analyze phase. And once you have an improvement in place, then you put certain controls. So you, you try to sustain that new improved process. Um, 
if you are not following so far don't worry because we are going to walk through a really simple example and uh, that should clear things up so let's take an example from the paper that i i just mentioned um this is about the distribution of room service delivery times um in a hotel so imagine that you're the gm or rather in many of your cases you probably don't have to imagine <laughs> but imagine your hotel has a problem of um, late deliveries um or in in terms of room service and you start tracking the time it takes from the time it an order is placed to the reception to the time the customer receives their order and you do you do this mapping for a month or two months or whatever period of time you feel is sufficient for you to get an idea of where your process is so so you you are the gm and you you figure out that you are having problems with late deliveries and you're getting a lot of customer complaints about it and you start monitoring this and you you come up with this chart basically and you see that your average mean delivery time is 26 minutes and you see um that your average is pretty it's it's close to the customer requirement of 30 minutes the customer wants it within 30 minutes so you're pretty close to 30 minutes on an average but you can see that you have a wide standard deviation even though the, though the average is 26 um you are within 3 or 4 standard deviations you cross that 30 minute boundary so as the gm now you're thinking okay like how do i fix this i want i all almost 100% want all my customers to get their delivery in their room within 30 minutes so how do you go about that so if you were to follow a deme the demeic um stages you would start by first defining the problem a key aspect of defining the problem is to create a process map where you you simply in terms of a flow chart or like in terms of you can even just write it in terms of steps like a recipe 1 2 3 4 you write down the sked the activity or the schedule that happens every time an order is placed um and you start defining the problem better so by doing this you start defining the problem better you start articulating what your project goal should be so in this phase um all the stakeholders from your kitchen staff to your management to your to the delivery person all of you get together and you start describing the problem you're simply just in a paragraph or two you're you're writing down the problem statement the most important thing in this phase is to identify what your output is going to be so for an for example in our case the output is very clear it's delivery time but different projects have different outputs some projects might be some other examples of outputs are say you are you are having a lot of errors in your billing and that billing errors is causing another headache for the customer like you are either overcharging sometimes or worse you are undercharging and the customer in that case the customer is happy but your other customers which is your shareholders or the people financing your hotel or who are benefiting from the profit are going to be unhappy so the first step is to get all your stakeholders together explain articulate clearly articulate what your output is what what is the what is the pain that you're trying to solve now a lot of companies and a lot of projects suffer because they don't spend a lot of time in this um and certain there are certain common mistakes like a, for example a common mistake is revenue um why is revenue a bad bad indicator or why is revenue a bad output to have a demeic project i want you guys to sort of think about it and um, maybe in the q and a um, i will i will reveal why revenue is bad but if you are business savvy i think you should know why revenue is not a good way to measure improvement but when it comes to an improvement problem so so this is the define phase um in the measure phase you actually go and start seeing you start measuring like i mentioned in during the problem statement you start measuring what your output is and what the current process state is so i took the example i took the same example from the paper what they did was a very simple thing they they did a pareto chart 
so you can use any kind of tools in this um the goal here is to just measure the current state so you have to find a way to quantify what your current state is and so that you know when you actually improve and go to control you know that you've improved so what they did was they chart they did a pareto chart where they looked at customer complaints and they looked at the frequency of customer com complaints and they categorized it so from this pareto chart it's very obvious that almost 80% of the complaints are from late delivery none of the customers really have or very few customers have problems with incorrect order cold food or poor quality or any other issue um the line on the top it's it's going up to 100 because basically it's a cumulative uh, percentage so 75% of the issues are with late delivery then another 11% uh, or 9% come from incorrect order um another 8% come from cold food and so on and so forth so they add up to 100% of your total complaints this tool is really good um because it gives you an idea of um where that 80% of the trouble is coming from generally in industry we look at we try to solve 21% uh, of the problems um that will give you a, a, an output change of 80% so if you only fix this one problem you're already going to see your complaint rate going going down by 80% that's that's the idea behind it now if you do a traditional six sigma training in green belt or black belt or whatever or if you just do it through any kind of open courseware like mit offers on youtube or coursera you can learn all these different tools so don't get too hung up on the tools or if you're trying to learn this by yourself too don't get too hung up with the statistics or the tools there's there's infinite number of resources online so anyway as a gm you looked at this um and you saw that okay 75% of my problems are because of late delivery so i want to tackle that because that's going to give you 80% an effect of 80% so 20% of the problems will give you 80% effect or benefit then the team moves to what we called the analyze phase um this figure is a very typical figure it's very very commonly used in manufacturing it's called a fishbone diagram because of its shape um it's it's sometimes also called it its original japanese name is called ishikawa it definitely comes from one of the japanese companies probably toyota in this tool basically what you do is you you label the output uh at the end of the fish and you have all these branches and you categorize the branches based on man method material um and environment um so in this example they've listed it as equipment people materials and methods and you as a team so you're you're always in they make projects are always working as a cross functional team so as i mentioned before when you're doing this act this particular activity or the activity before you're going to have all your stakeholders from the sommelier or the receptionist or the gm um you know all the stakeholders who care about this problem and you start using you you put you put a blank sheet of paper and you draw this diagram and then the team starts chipping in so your cook might say i have poor kitchen equipment that's why i i i tend to get late or someone else might uh, or you have someone in say housekeeping i, I might i might be getting this part wrong so excuse me uh, if 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 that's not the right people doing these activities but anyway um say say your housekeeping people say we don't have enough can spoon you but... audible, uh, clearly can, can you hear me now yeah now now, now it's better okay sorry yeah like i said the cross functional team works together and starts filling this out um your uh, your hr team or your or you know or your managers of the hotel might say you have inexperienced workers that's why the food is it takes too long for them to make the food so all these all these points probably have a valid impact on your output which is causing the late room in uh, room delivery service so this in the analyze phase you start trying to identify all these factors that might be leading to a change in the output 
usually towards the undesirable side of things in this phase you also um, you also confirm that these factors have an impact on the output so once you once you identify all these factors you could either do a survey amongst the entire staff and see how people respond and what people think is the most important thing so why, and why is this important because imagine if i was a chef and i'm the only one doing this project or i'm i'm only looking at this diagram and i'm because i'm always in the kitchen and i'm, I'm so focused on that area to me i'm always going to think that the kitchen equipment is the main problem because i i see it every day but someone someone who's working in housekeeping might see it so it's really important for you to come together as a cross functional team create these and uh, identify these factors then through either something like a survey or other um, in manufacturing we use design of experiments and we use other statistical tools but in in generally in business process it will come into a survey or or something like that, or some sort of um, other quantitative oh. slash um, identifying the important factors anyway so you go through this process with your cross functional team you identify the important factors um, and now you know what needs to be fixed so in the paper they've not disclosed what their problems were um, i mean i'm for obvious reasons so so for our example let, let's just consider that um, the main problem was not having enough silverware so you go in and you buy more silverware you also start maintaining your your machines in the kitchen more and you see um, and you implement this so you you've implemented this now the next step is for you to go back and measure and see what the distribution looks like so you go back for a month you see you know you you monitor your delivery times and now suddenly you've noticed that the 30 minute mark is within your four standard deviations so so it seems that you've improved the process um and it seems that whatever whatever you identified whatever factors you identified in the analyze phase seem to have a positive effect on your output now i want to make this a little bit more digestible so for a second put your uh, eyes on this table you see the different sigma levels and you see the process yield so in our case process yield basically means how many what percentage of times are you hitting that 30 minute mark so you can see this is where you were we we identified in slide number 2 or 3 that you had a 3 sigma process so you were you were getting the delivery time right 93% of the times but when you actually convert that to defects per million that 93% is actually 66807 times um and that sometimes depending on the business case or depending on the project is way too high now you have to use a little bit of common sense in the project and identify what sigma level you are most comfortable with even though this methodology is called six sigma doesn't mean you have to always shoot for six sigma uh, because to me if if i'm delivering late 66000 times out of a million um it doesn't seem really that bad so you have to always also manage the business case so if i if i have a demic project i'm allocating five or 10 resources the chef the chef somelia everyone's time for the course of this project for 6 months that cost has to be less than the cost savings that you're going to achieve or it should it should be or the customer service should be so meaningful that that cost is justified so that's that's just something that you have to think of you you should never let your common sense go even though you have a solid problem solving solving technique so anyway so you've you've identified the important factors you've improved the process and now your mean time has gone down from 26 minutes to 23 minutes and all of a sudden you're only getting 6000 late deliveries um uh, out of a million which which to me as a customer i would probably be very satisfied with this the c uh, in demic d m a i c is stands for control and 
this is if not this is as important as define so i would i would rank this the second most important thing or probably the most important thing i i mean i feel like everything is important so i should probably not mention that but you've put put all these um, improvements in place where you've brought, you've maintained a certain level of silverware you've you've now done preventive maintenance on your equipment but you have to also maintain it so now you've suddenly set standards so the customer remember the customer once they start seeing that you always deliver on time they are going to expect that and that no longer becomes a surprise for them and whenever they have an expectation and you don't meet their expectation they're going to be less happy um less happier than they would be happy if you were to surpass their expectations that's always the case it's uh, human psychology so it's very important to for you to put controls in place once you've made all these improvements typically in industry we use what we call control charts which is nothing but taking data points taking their average and calculating lower control limits and upper control limits now lower control and upper con control limits are not your customer requirements but they are calculating calculated using statistics or you can also just have um have a benchmark based on your experience so for example uh say i'm dominos i'm working on the delivery uh, delivery time again and i i want to say every time i cross 25 minutes um i want to know so what happens is every if you see two or three deliveries constantly in a row going above 25 minutes you have a system in place which will force you to go and check that system out it will force you to go and see what is going wrong in the process so that you can quickly correct it and bring back that um average down to an acceptable level and that's the whole point of having control charts um you can see in this example they've given like a, a an assignable cause where the delivery person had a flat tire and therefore they couldn't meet the 30 minute mark so situations like these are assignable causes and you're they're not going to occur on a regular basis so even if you have a six sigma process you might still see something like this but this is a one off event so you you can see that overall in over the 14 days you've actually done pretty well you can in cases like these you can cut cut yourself some slack and uh, you know be okay with it but anyway so this is the point of control charts and this is the point of the control uh, control phase another thing that you might uh, come across when discussing six sigma or demake with with someone who's accustomed to this or some someone from a company that has a six sigma program is is what is a a3 like a3 is a very popular acronym and i feel like everyone should walk away with this um A3 is exactly what it sounds like it's the size of the paper uh, there's nothing scientific about it uh but the logic behind having an A3 is you put everything you've done in your project in this format on an A3 paper with all the all the phases marked so don't bother reading uh, reading all the small um, uh, small text in here but i just wanted to show you what a typical A3 looks like um and the idea behind this is you should be able to articulate everything you do and everything you find within a confined space that really forces you to do some critical thinking and articulate a, a larger complex problem into simpler terms so that everyone can understand it um this is especially useful for managers and directors who are not engineers anymore <laughs> they like to see visuals they like to see everything condensed um because they have a lot going on and we engineers make fun of managers all the time saying that they have the memory of a goldfish so you have to you literally have 5 seconds to explain what the problem is and and what you've done in my company and in every every other company that i know of there's usually a board in in each area so imagine a factory floor if you go to a factory floor you'll see a bunch of a3s i mean it provided it it is a continuous improvement it, there is a continuous improvement culture in that company and they have a six sigma program you will always see this 
it also helps to sort of uh, put each and every employee's projects on display and it 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 helps to sort of gain more buy in from your from your employees because when you have a process like this in place it can often get frustrating because people have to do things in steps they have to change the way they do it so as a means to encourage all the employees and to make them more aware and accepting of the changes you involve them in the change process and you celebrate them by putting up their a3s on on walls um typically we also train our production employees who are high school graduates and each and every production employee ha- or most of the production employees have their own a3s um while they're working on the manufacturing floor they're always encouraged to look at ways to reduce defects and sometimes if a problem is complex enough we basically have given each and every one of them training in green belt uh, training in uh, six sigma and they they do projects like these so uh, let's take a 20 second humor break so what is the role of senior leadership so I, as i mentioned it's very important to have a cross functional team but what is the role of your leader so i i found this uh, i found this online obviously through google um where a six sigma consultant is being hired by by a boss um clearly the boss is not the kind of boss you would want so if you have this kind of boss i suggest you update your resume <laughs> but uh, basically the six sigma consultant is asking him you know what are the problems in your organization and how can i help and the boss tends to say oh, we don't have oh we don't have any problem was the second step and all the employees are frustrated and all he cares about is the belt which is the certification so that is something that you have to be wary of when you when you are trying to develop a six sigma organization it's top leadership is extremely extremely important and i cannot stress this enough um if you looked at some of the early adopters for six sigma um i mentioned general uh, electric and jack welch was the pioneer of the six sigma program for general electric and the company did its had its best performance when he was the ceo and he basically he would talk six sigma in almost every meeting and that helped permeate the whole program all the way to people working on the production floor so anyway uh, what are some potential projects or what what areas can the hospitality industry use this kind of problem solving technique so i i i i could list some of these and i i used the paper that i referenced also um something like reduce billing errors losses standardization of cleanliness across areas reduce inventory surplus so a potential six sigma program can be you're buying say you have a a variety of inventory that you buy on a daily basis one project can be how do i reduce the waste um of these raw materials and therefore reduce inventory surplus now keep in mind reducing inventory surplus leads to increase in cash flow that means most of your money is not stuck up in raw material and you can use that money somewhere else or for a rainy day like like covid-19 or something like an airbnb suddenly comes across and now you have unprecedented competition and there's a huge market disruption so a company that that has a good six sigma program will focus on quality cost and delivery all at the same time while doing it in a systematic way um i also want to briefly go over how starwood did it because i, I this is typically what a multinational company does um even a company like metronic i'm sure metron uh, i'm sure walmart mcdonalds all these big companies have some sort of a program which is similar to a six sigma program um each company likes to rename six sigma into their own branded version but essentially the sense of the problem solving technique is the same so in starwood uh, the ceo uh, barry stern lich drove this continuous improvement work culture in 2000 around 2009 i believe or 2006 i'm, I'm not too sure of the date um where he really championed this the the permeance of this particular technique 
each vice president worked on their business objectives using this technique and this technique was also taught to the gms of each hotel and the belts also work in a similar way so a master black belt or a project champion typically has uh, goals at the operational level so they will have their own a3s which are often called strategic a3s um and these a3s typically flow down to to the lower levels of your organization um they had six sigma black belts um for each hotel that had more than 450 rooms so there would they had a specially allocated person just doing six sigma black belt projects at each of these hotels uh not for longer than 2 years and they would then place that person in some other de department after 2 years so that they weren't worried about losing their jobs after completing all the six sigma black belt projects each six sigma black belt would have some green belt employees under them who would again deliver on lower level projects so think of it that this way that customer complaints is a problem for a hotel that has 450 plus employees and this black belt now has five or six different projects um one person is working on late delivery one person is working on billing issues one person is um working on say something like um um customer payment issues each of these will be green belt projects so this this is the typical organization um structure when when you have six sigma in place and how how to flow it down so with that we come to the appendix i i don't know if these slides will be shared with you but if they are i i i added some reference there's a mit open courseware on youtube where you can actually follow the whole lecture series on six lean six sigma by mit um if you wish to get certified there's i would recommend the american society for qualification um i don't get paid by them or anything like that but i just feel like they're the the gold standard for any kind of certification regarding six sigma with that let's open it up for um, question and answers i don't know how i did on time so milan do you want to thank you thank you tanay for explaining the concept of six sigma and relating it so well to the hospitality industry uh to sum up uh, i mean six six sigma process uh, would help nullify defects and variations in the process uh, which would ultimately lead to customer satisfaction uh mr tane uh, because it's very late uh, night at montreal canada so we would take a quick questions uh, and then we will allow tane to lead the meeting so we can just have questions on chat which i would ask tane on your behalf and we could seek answers from him considering the constraints of time we would be able to take a couple of questions so if you have any questions uh then i would like to ask you one thing yeah uh, the thing is that normally it is assumed uh, that the six sigma concept work well with manufacturing industries because yeah. more or less the processes are standardized and designed for manufacturing but when it comes to service industry where there is a lot of human interface uh, yeah. how would you apply it to the service industry so i i i do i do want to stress the point that um even manufacturing this not every manufacturing site follows this um but to answer your answer to your question about service industry six sigma is being in the, is is being uh, implemented in banks it's being implemented in hospitals so as an industrial engineer a lot of my colleagues who are also industrial en uh, sorry co um, classmates from asu who are also industrial engineers now work in different industries one of my friends does six sigma in airlines air canada actually had a position last month which i was consider considering applying to so they, their deliverables are going to be very similar to the hotel industry um something like a hospital where um one of my friends is working on reducing the time spent in an er to free up beds as fast as possible um he's been working for the last 3 years to to improve and standardize processes there so even if you have a business process there's always room for improvement and six sigma basically helps you achieve those improvements in a in a more systematic way 
So I, I hope that I think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have clearly answered the question. Uh, I think what I could do is uh, whenever I get questions related to this, I could text them to you and probably uh, have it sent to the responder or to the participant who will ask this question. Sure. So for now, thank you, Tane. Thank you very much for joining us at this odd hour in Canada. And uh, I'm sure that you'll be working from home and it is going to be stressful for you to stay awake till late night. So thank you so much for joining. <laughs> thank and, you. Uh, and we'll see you soon, Tane. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you could just stop sharing. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, now I welcome our second speaker, Mr. Nishan Kale who is the Territory Manager, Diversity India Hygiene Private Limited. Mr. Kale has over 10 years of experience in sales and marketing and over six years in cleaning and hygiene industry. He has handled three key clients like Marriott, Hyatt, ITC, Taj, IFG, and many other such leading brands. Over to you, Mr. Kale. Uh, could you start your video, sir, so that we could spotlight you? Morning, uh, Mr. Millen, and good morning to all. Actually, my uh, you know webinar, the screen got disconnected. Are you very much visible and audible? Is it audible now? Yes, you're audible. Thank you so much, and thanks to Mr. Mr. Jadav for his uh, detailed PPT. And uh, I will just brief you about myself. So myself, Nishan Kelly. I'm uh, you know my hometown is Jabalpur MP. Currently, I am uh, associated with the uh, Diversity India Hygiene since 2014. So I'm taking care of cleaning and hygiene business on behalf of my company. I worked in Gujarat, Goa, and now based in Mumbai. I stay at Banjo West. So currently, I'm taking care of hospitality business on behalf of my company. So I'm taking care of a couple of five-star hotels like Taj Mahal, Kolaba, Mumbai, St. Regis, ITC, Maratha, Venisa, etc. And I'm also taking I am also leading commercial laundry business across uh, Mumbai. So, okay, uh, you know, we all are aware what is happening across the world. So, I, so we should not go into the depth of how coronavirus, Wuhan, COVID-19 has come up. So, we all are, you know, know how it is impacting our day-to-day -day life. Okay, so it has forced people to stay indoor, to get locked down. And it has, you know, uh, forced people to work from home across the world so you know it is impacting to the economy of the world across the world if you talk about all the malls cinema theaters uh, mnc companies corporate offices school colleges retail hotels even has uh, shut down so this coronavirus has changed the mindset of the people it has changed the way of uh, living uh, of the people and uh, people are more aware about cleaning and hygiene uh, yes, we were aware, but you know, uh, now people are more into cleaning and hygiene and that is the, we can say that is a good part that, you know, people are taking, taking care of themselves and those people who were not much into uh, hygiene, uh, you know, those people were not aware about cleaning and hygiene. So those people are also aware the, the benefits, importance of cleaning and hygiene. Okay, and we are we all are aware that uh, vaccine has not come out. Various uh, organization across the world, including India, the scientists are working hard to come out with a good vaccine to conquer to counter this uh, coronavirus. So as of now, the best medicine is to. There's a saying that uh, prevention is the best uh, medicine. So we need to you know prevent this deadly coronavirus. It's not about uh, you know. I do not mean to say that deadly. We all know that it is uh, it is hurting everybody. So the best part is to take care of ourselves by two three measures. We can you know take care into our day to day life. First is personal hygiene, hand hygiene, and social distancing that we all are aware. So hand hygiene is very simple. You can you know uh, keep on frequently wash your hands with a liquid soap. In hotels, we supply soft care plus. It is an antibacterial hand wash soap. So we should be, you know, washing our hands frequently whenever we go out. And uh, the duration to wash our hands is uh, minimum 20 seconds. And after that, uh, we should be sanitizing our hands with a alcohol-based sanitizer. Any any sanitizer above 70 percentage of alcohol is equally good to prevent, to conquer, to counter coronavirus. So for our company, we do have various uh, sanitizer. Met Plus, we do have a range. Desi Extra, we do have a you know, certain range of hand sanitizer. 
so we all are if we you know talk about uh, uh, particularly uh, particularly about the hotels so now hotels are working with uh, 50% of your 50% staff occupancy you know people are working with 15 day shift and they are you know forced to be at home for next 15 days so the hotels are working with 30 to 50 percentage of their staff and uh, they are also staying into the hotel for next 14 days so that they are self quarantined self isolated and you know and uh, nobody else is coming inside the hotel and not, and not much people are going outside the hotel so i will quickly go through the ppt which will show us how to take care or how to you know disinfect the hotel or a guest room or a banquet hall anything so i will just go through quickly go through a slide i will share my screen to you all i hope mr milan you all can see my screen can you see my screen mr milan i cannot hello your yes sir we can see we can see okay yeah mr milan mic is mute okay all right no no we can see your desktop thank you so much okay i will quickly go through the you know this is our uh, ppt presentation which has come globally we are following this so diversity uh, decontamination guidelines for cleaning room against outbreak like covid 19 so this process we need to follow as a current scenario as well as we need to take precautions post lockdown also okay so i will so you know hygiene professional team must use so this is a process to do the disinfecting of any guest room or any the or you can also you, we should also disinfect the entire hotel including corridor including guest room including banquet halls everything so a professional uh, team should conduct this or the you know the local staff or the staff of the hotel can also are doing this process after we are you know we are taking care of certain webinars so the person who is doing this process should use ppe we all are aware what is ppe it is personal protective equipment which includes gloves which includes a uh, body suit single use body suit single use surgical mask respirator the mask we can consider n95 or n100 eye protection you know all these uh, so these are the guidelines by the mohfw that is ministry of health and family welfare and uh, who so we so i will quickly go through it so room cleaning including bathroom where guest has been identified so i will just brief you about that you know earlier the priority of any guest was the luxury and pleasure to you know when they visit to any resort or a hotel but now the priority has is going to be has been changed or is going to be changed the people have become more choosy and they have become you know the people will become Uh, they will more focus on uh, uh, hygiene level of any resort or a hotel so the all the hospitality industries are you know gearing up so that they can give the best possible environment hygiene environment for their guests so the step one for this is the environment surface disinfection using spraying optimization mainly for confirm identified cases so we need to follow this process to each and every room whether because we do not know whether the guest who is staying in, uh, into that hotel or a room is covid positive so we will consider that a particular guest is 100% covid 19 positive so this process is called uh, spraying optimization or misting in different in, in different industries the name has been changed like you know in healthcare industry like uh, hospitals it is called ulv spray somewhere it is called optimizer somewhere it is called fumigation somewhere it is called misting so fumigation we must have seen the machine a person is you know uh, uh, discharging a smoke to the particular to the particular area just hold on there is a little uh, disturbance okay i'm so sorry so in hospitality industry so you know it is called misting so we were talking about the fumigation okay so the uh, fumigation is the discharging of the smoke which works on that machine works with the petrol or diesel so that is only to kill the pesticide or pest or insect so that is used by the pest control companies so we will talk about only the misting machine so misting machine is a small machine which uh, discharge the liquid 
and the chemical of course i will brief you about which chemical we have to use it so it dispenses a small uh, molecule or small particles of water and chemical into the air so the tank of the machine is hard, is a 3 to 5 liters okay the process says that only trained professional need to carry out okay uh, we i have just inform you so allow the product to so we need to i'll show you the video also how to you know how to use the misting machine so whenever we are doing the misting we need to make sure that we are wearing the proper pp kit and only one person should allow to enter into the room and the room should be vacuum like the you know uh, the main door of the room should be closed ac should be shut down and uh, the main door should be closed and the person who is doing the misting he should do the misting for 5 to 10 minutes so he can rotate the machine to the different corner of the uh, guest room if we talk about guest room and bathroom and the best part of the misting process is that it allows the chemical and solution to go into the uh, you know depth of the room into all the corners of the room behind the cupboard behind the curtains behind the underneath the bed each and every uh, uh, part of the room so this process should be carried out uh, you know from 5 to 10 minutes and after doing this process the room should or the area if you are doing banquet hall if you are doing uh, any guest room the area the particular room should get uh, you know vacuum it means there should be no involvement the there should be no movement of any person inside that particular area where we have done the misting so the contact time is 10 minutes uh, is 1 hour so we need to isolate the particular room or the area for next 1 hour so in next in this 1 hour so the chemical that we are going to use for the misting we have three option third option is not available because as i told you this is a global ppt so these two top two product that is virex 2256 that is the name of the product and oxivir first people who are associated with hospitality industry should be aware about the virex and oxivir because these these are the chemical which are you know the life savior for everybody uh, thanks to the content uh, the ingredients of these chemicals okay so the process say while doing the misting it encapsulates the virus or uh, bacteria it breaks it into the various uh, small pieces and it kills the it can also kill the covid 19 virus which has been this product these products has been approved by who also so these chemical having the capability and are able to kill the any virus if we talk about corona virus yes it kills the corona virus within 10 minutes okay so we need to isolate the guest room for one hour within for next one hour there will be no involvement and the first and the once we will enter the room so that room will be 100% disinfected and uh, then again uh, when we uh, you know uh, then uh, for the uh, important touch points we need to uh, disinfect with the microfiber duster and a virex chemical in with your uh, spray bottle so you need to uh, wipe and disinfect all the touch points i'll show you the so these are all the touch points okay so these are all the key touch points so we are why we are again uh, disinfecting because you know we need again if you want to take a double security safety so we can use this process again so the in picture you can see the highlighted touch point in red we, we can see there is a door handle of the cupboard or wc or you know table sofa lamp etc so you can also go through it all these are the important touch point where the you know we have to 100% disinfect the corona virus so after that then you can do the regular cleaning of your uh, washroom of your other touch point like you know people who are associated with the hospitality industry they must be aware about tasi r1 r2 r3 r6 and so on so later part you need to clean and wipe the bathroom accessories and floors with and uh, as well as uh, your tv remote etc with r1 as we all know that's a bathroom cleaner r2 is a hard surface cleaner disinfectant so i will just go through about the do's and don'ts while doing disinfecting pro process okay these are the do's 
clean the entire premise before disinfection service okay air vents or air condition to be open up for the treatment switch off central ac air condition or any air condition that is the most important part because the chemical and the infection which is there inside the room should not come out completely close the treated premises without leaving any opening for at least 3 hour this is for 1 hour actually so we need to make sure that the room is completely vacuum there is no possibility uh, the windows are already closed so we need to make sure that uh, the entire area is vacuum and uh, total time taken for treatment will be around minimum 1 hour you can also extend it if you want treat all the mops and the mops and the duster that we, that has been used to disinfect the entire process has should not be extend to clean the another room normally in hospitality industry the standard is that one duster can use up to two, two to four rooms but for a outbreak in case of outbreak of corona virus that is covid 19 single duster should not should be used for a single room only it should not be used for another couple of rooms so immediately we can send it to the laundry so i will just brief you about the process that you know we have put a take care in the laundry of the mop so employee during cleaning are advised to use glove we are aware door handle telephone instrument all these are touch point that we have discussed has to be disinfect again don't do not keep any food stuff of course it is a chemical after all so food stuff should be uh, you know should, should not be kept in the open should be closed somewhere do not leave personal belongings such a handbag watch mobile okay do not allow anyone to enter the premises within 1 hour that we have just discussed do not switch on coffee vending machine or any other vending machine up to 1 hour okay i will brief you about sorry okay i will just show you the video just to brief you how this misting uh, works so this video is little tilted actually i tried my best to fix it okay so this is this we can see a person you know wearing proper pp kit and he is doing the misting of the room so this misting machine you know it can throws up to 22 feet it can cover the area up to 22 feet if you are standing if you are taking the machine in your hand or you know if you are putting on the table so it can cover the area up to 20 to 22 feet so this entire process if you are doing any room so this entire process not take more than 5 to 10 minutes and you just need to cover all the area that's it that is the only part you need to do it and it works on electricity we do have a machine called typhoon it is an fnb product so this is the typhoon machine the capacity of the tank is 5 liters i will just quickly brief you about the most important part that is the chemical most of you must be aware about the virex chemical okay virex is epa approved that is environment protection agency it is an organization in usa america it it says that uh, this virex chemical is 100% safe on environment and on human being so that was the certificate so this is non so this is the pi sheet we call it product information sheet so this is the name of the product is virex 2256 so 256 is the uh dilution means when we will divide 1000 divide by uh, 256 the dilution will come 4 ml so for mopping and dusting the dilution is 4 ml per liter of water and for misting that we have just discussed the dilution should be 10 ml in 1 liter of water so varex 2256 is epa approved as i just told you and this is non alcoholic safe on any surface safe on uh, marble kota stone any kind of stone and it is also safe on your bathroom fittings and accessories so this is basically a healthcare product that is been used in the opts ots or patient theater in uh, hospitals so you can see these are a different composition ingredients of the product so i will so okay this is the uh as we have just discussed fogging that is misting the dilution is 10 ml so i will the most important part of the uh, product is that okay the ph in 9 to 10 is not that much ha uh, harmful it is uh, okay alkaline product so these are all the bacteria which this particular virex can take care of it so if we talk about the virus because uh, covid 19 is a deadly virus so it also takes care of all these viruses it also takes well takes care of human corona virus the covid 19 is a new virus human corona virus already existed and it also takes care of 
it kills hiv aids virus as well so there are so many viruses this so this product is a global product one shot product to disinfect and to sanitize your particular area so this product can be used in hospital in industry in hotels and 95% of the hotels are using this particular uh, product and you can use it anyway even i'm for my personal use i'm i'm using this particular product at my home also i disinfect the touch points whenever the parcel comes out from outside like parcel from different vendors so i first disinfect then i uh, take in all the parcels so i'll go okay we do have another product the substitute of this that is oxybit 516 you all must be aware about this product this was a fantastic product so this is a substitute of virex both are equally almost same there are certain uh, differences the best part of this product is it is ahp technology it works on ahp te technology that is accelerated hydrogen peroxide it gives you the instant disinfection it instantly disinfect the surface it virex takes 10 minutes to disinfect the surface surface and uh, oxybit 516 it takes only 5 minutes to disinfect any surface so this product is little bit on the the ph is acidic so this product is little acidic and this is also one of the best product so these two products are the see, sorry are the saviors for everybody uh, including the hospitality industry if you talk about uh, hand sanitizer so currently we are focusing on a product that is softe desi extra so it is alcohol alcohol based hand sanitizer it contain 80% alcohol that is the best part as i inform you even the government and the ministry of health every who everybody are saying that a hand sanitizer should be above 70% of alcohol and the best part of this product this is again works on hydrogen peroxide technology it means it gives you instant sanitization or disinfection of your hand within 2 to 3 seconds Okay. Uh, just now we have launched a product that is called uh, Hygienizer. I will just go through if time allows. I believe. Okay. This is a Hygienizer kit. So this is a kit which uh, I'll just show you the you know. Yeah. This is a, a small kit. So this is the you know the product that we have just launched. So it includes three things. That is the uh, ready to use uh, Oxivir the uh, chemical uh, that is a uh, disinfectant for surface. it also includes the ready to use the hand sanitizer and it also includes a 20 to 25 hand wipe where you can spray oxivir on this product and the guests can wipe and disinfect and sanitize their own surfaces like you know if the guest is sitting on a restaurant so this product should be on each and every table of any restaurant so the guest can you know the guest can disinfect their own surfaces like table chair mobile laptop anything watch anything and uh, the hand sanitizer yes there is a hand sanitizer the product is desi extra to 80% alcohol based uh, sanitizer so this product should be involved in the kit that the hotel any hotel is offering to the guests at the time of check in so guest can you know double secure himself or herself to you know to avoid corona virus So, Mr. Milan, uh, that's all from myself. So, if you, if anybody having any questions, so, so that would be cool. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Uh, I'm sure that the cleaning and hygiene industry has a major role to play, especially after this post-COVID-19 pandemic. And the, the hotel industry and this cleaning and hygiene industry have to work hand in hand to fight yeah. this pandemic. Uh, sure. I'm sure that you would work design for a good package for the hospitality industry in India. Yes, of course, because uh, currently we are uh, because we cannot go out, so we are giving hundred percent support to all our customers on a global level. Our global team are working to uh, you know to arrange certain webinars for our, all our customers. So we do have an application expert, we do have a hygiene expert, we do have laundry expert who are you know who are doing their best to uh, to conduct various webinars and to create awareness about the process, the SOP. We are we have already come out come up with a certain SOPs to disinfect the goods vehicle, to disinfect the receiving area, kitchen, guest room, and the entire uh, premises. So, just requested to the stop sharing your screen so that we could uh, have a better view of the panel. Okay. 
Okay, uh, so we are opening this forum for questions, uh, but till the time we get questions on chat, uh, let me just update you on a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost is uh, we, are all, we are live on YouTube, as you all are aware, and we have hit about uh, 700 viewers who are currently viewing us live on YouTube. Uh, we have a good interface uh, between YouTube and the Zoom platform. Uh, we have a moderator, uh, my colleague, who is going to take their questions to us also. So it is going to be interactive via YouTube as well. So I'm very happy that uh, you are the, watching us live there. Uh, I would also like to float a couple of polls uh, because we all know that the first question that comes in our mind is uh, how do we get out of this situation? How do we get out of this lockdown period? So probably uh, these are the couple of polls, a couple of questions that I've posed to the audience to keep you engaged. Uh, of course, we are also taking questions from Mr. Kelly uh, on chat. So we are we have to understand here that uh, will the hotels be more cautious towards quality and safety to retain their clientele because it is very important in the current times for the hotel industry to get back new clientele at the same time retain their old clientele. So we have to be very careful on that. The second question says that uh, whether the hotels are geared up to develop the operational process on the basis of the principles of Six Sigma. You know, uh, on the backdrop of what the first speaker, Dr. Jado, uh, Mr. Jado, spoke to us on. Uh, so. Uh, so we have got, uh, just to brief you, that uh, almost every one of us agree to the fact that the hotels have to be more conscious uh, towards quality and safety because uh, this lockdown period has taught us uh, uh, to be more cautious about quality and safety. With regards to the second question, I would just like to share uh, the poll, uh, the, the findings of the poll, basically. Uh, most of, uh, about 42% people, uh, participants feel that yes, uh, the industry would develop their operational process uh, based on the principles of Six Sigma. However, to my surprise, there are about 70 percent participants who feel that no, the industry is still not geared up uh, to go in for uh, Six Sigma. And there are about 46 percent people uh, who say that they can't say about this particular situation, which means that uh, probably the Six Sigma is not a very deep-rooted concept in the hotel industry, and we are slowly inching towards it. Uh, we could. Uh, we could take questions on chat for Mr. Kale. Uh, Mr. Kale, till the time we get a uh, few questions, I would like to ask you one question. If you could un unmute yourself, please. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that, uh, like I said, uh, the cleaning and hygiene industry will have, will have to work hand in hand with the hotel industry. So, uh, are you are you planning to tie up with a particular brand, uh, whether India, whether in India or international, uh, wherein you would be their sole cleaning and hygiene partner? Uh, for the hotel or something like that, because we have uh, come across with a lot of such examples uh, uh, on on news or or probably articles in newspaper wherein we have tie-ups with these kind of things. Whether it could be a training tie-up or it could be a complete sanitization of the hotel tie-up. Uh, yes, of course. If you talk about the cleaning hygiene, so currently we do have uh, you know uh, some of the ninety-five percent of hotels works with the diversity, as you know, as you must be aware. So 95% of the hotels are already working with us and we are giving 100% support to all the customers, not only to the hotel, but to other industry, like as I told you, retail business, government offices, etc. And our we do have a designated team that is uh, pest management team, we call it IPM, that is integrated pest management. So that team is uh, getting into tie-ups, getting into contracts of uh, proper uh, fumigation process or the Misting process that the the you know the video that uh, that I've just showed you. So we do have a designated team who are taking care of disinfection of the entire process during amid of a lockdown and also going to take the contract you know post lockdown because none of the premises, maybe hotel or any other office building, will open without the process of disinfection of the entire area. So we are already into talks with certain uh, industries where we are not into in, into the depth. And of course, if you talk about hospitality industry, yes, we do have a, already having a tire for cleaning and hygiene and uh, 90 to 95% hotels are already associated uh, with us on a global level. Right. Uh, Mr. Nikhil, you have a question for Mr. Kelly. Go on. Yes. Mr. Kelly. Hi, hi, Mr. Hi. Nikhil. Uh, it was a very nice, knowledgeable presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I have a small question for you. Uh, in your presentation, you mentioned two products. Mm -hmm. One was Virex and the other was Oxivir 5. 
of the 560 years. Yeah. So one is the chloride based product and one is a hydrogen peroxide based product. Mm -hmm. So what is the uh, advantages or disadvantages of using them? Or, you know, which is a better product to use out of those two? Okay. Okay. First of all, both the products are life savior as of now, as I told you, and uh, both the products are equally good uh, and both the products are WHO approved products across the world. And uh, just to inform you that 90 to 95% are the percentage of the hotel. If we talk about only hotels, so they are using both the product, but uh, mostly the customer is uh, using Virex because Virex is non-alcoholic. It is safe on any surface. The contact time is 10 minutes. The dilution is very less for misting. It is the dilution is 10 ml per liter of water. And uh, for mopping and wiping purpose, the dilution, the dilution is only 4 ml per liter of water. For Oxivir, again, it is a fantastic uh, chemical. It is AHP approved, as I told you. The only issue with the, not issue, the only uh, 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 drawback of the product that it is highly uh, on the, uh, the pH is very acidic. So it is, it is highly acidic. Uh, as you can, you know, see in the pH sheet that the pH level is 1.5. That is quite on the higher side. So acidic product can, you know, harm the, may, uh, may harm the marble surface. It can uh, deteriorate the gloss level of the marble and it can also harm the, your know, bathroom accessories of brass, bronze and stainless steel. So that is the only issue, but the, both the products are equally good. Though, though both the product can do the misting, both the product can do, you know, we can do the misting and we can do the wiping and mopping. So both the products are equally good, but mo mostly people are, uh, preferring to go with the Virex. So does the chlorine based product Virex cause irritation to the eyes or do you know like normally chlorine when you add chlorine or you use mm -hmm. chlorine, mm -hmm. it causes some irritation to the eye. So does it do, or does it happen that way after uh, misting? No. For a chlorine based product for sodium hypochlorite, we do have a product that is Avert Plus. We do have another range that is called Avert Plus uh, because F, F, uh, FSSAI guidelines uh, are also telling that uh, people can use uh, sodium hypochlorite because that is very cost effective. The only problem is that it is harsh on uh, human skin. It is also harsh on certain uh, surfaces. So Virex and Oxivir, or if you talk about Virex only, so Virex is the product which is, there is no harm. It is EPA approved. There are not many chemicals which is EPA approved. As I told you, EPA is Environment right, yeah. Protection Authority. So it is safe to, safe on environment, safe on human beings, less dilution, very easy to use. Thank you so much. I hope I have, you know, able to answer your queries. Thank you, Mr. Kelly, for your valuable insight on the topic. Uh, as I said that uh, it is going to be the need of the hour uh, that we work uh, together uh, yes. to, to ensure the safety and hygiene of our guests. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Miller. Okay, now we move on to the next segment of this webinar. Uh, we uh, we heard uh, we heard the specialist uh, in the area of six sigma and in the area of cleaning and hygiene now we are going to talk or discuss with people who actually work at the grassroots level in the hospitality industry we are going to talk uh, we are going to discuss uh, with the operators or the operators of this particular industry so i am happy to invite uh, chef parvinder bali who is the corporate chef learning and development at the oberoi center of learning and development new delhi uh, I welcome uh, Ms. Trisha Chandra, who is the Associate Vice President Learning and Development and Employee Engagement, IHCL Mumbai. I welcome Mr. Prabhat Shukla, who is the Director of Housekeeping, Intercontinental Doha, the city at Qatar. He's live from Qatar with us. I welcome Mr. Graydon Roderick, who is the Quality Manager at the Ritz Carlton, Pune. Welcome all. I hope you're, I'm audible to you all. Yes, you are. Absolutely. Yes, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, to begin uh, the discussion or to set the ball rolling, I would just like to ask uh, one question common to all. I would probably like to know your perception on the future of hotel industry in the next few months and what strategy the industry would have to adopt before they start operations post this lockdown period. So, uh, Chef Bali, uh, you yes. could initiate this discussion. I think, you know, it is very uh, important that, you know, we decide on how do we bring our people back. Now, this bringing people back is both our employees as well as our guests. Um, and I think the employees cannot just be brought to the same place. I think 
they have to be right. brought to a new place, you know, which is important. Uh, a new place where a psychological safety is very important because, you know, a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, when the employees join, their parents are going to be in a lot of stress that, you know, how is my child going to stay there? Is the company taking care of, you know, all the things? So I think we as a company, the brand image of the company will stand for if we are um, telling the employees that we care about your safety and we also talk to the customers and tell them that safety is on our priority and that is what we are working towards. And I think these are the times if you can instill that kind of confidence in people that you are, you know, preparing and serving and all your operations in the in, in your hotels are directed towards guest safety and security and employee safety and security. I think that is what is really going to bring the hotel industry back on track. Yeah, does that answer the question? Melinda, you're, you're muted. Can you unmute yes. yourself? Uh, Ms. Yeah. Sirisha, can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely audible. Yeah, I can. Can you just throw some light on the same topic? Yeah, I, I completely agree with Chef Bali. Actually, I can't um, agree more than that. I, I think in the current scenario, it is safety, uh, health and safety of our all our stakeholders involved, which is going to be of primary importance, whether it is our associates, our colleagues, whether it is our guests. Yeah. So I would say uh, more from the perspective of it's better uh, safe than sorry. So all the precautions that can be taken to be able to demonstrate to the entire fraternity, whether it is, like I said, all stakeholders, that safety is of premium. So it might be a little tedious initially to get started with, whether it is our associates or whether it is our guests. But I guess uh, in the long run, um, it is this focus on safety and personal health, which is going to make sure that the industry really bounces back. So for anybody who feels that this is going to be a quick and easy thing, it's not going to be a quick and easy thing. It might as well be prepared for a long haul. Uh, and uh, from a long-term perspective, uh, I think safety has to be primarily on everybody's mind. So I'm in complete agreement with Chef. Mr. Prabhat, do you echo the same emotions of the Indian hotel industry? Mr. Prabhat, your audio is on mute, I think so. You're not audible. You're not able to, yeah. You have to unmute yourself. He's not unmuted himself. Yeah, now, now you're on unmute, but still it's not audible. Maybe you want to check the uh, computer audio, Prabhat. Is the uh, audio full for you? System audio? No, we are not able to hear you, Mr. Prabhat. Till then, can you ask the question to the next yes. person? Uh, till Graydon, uh, Graydon, till the time Mr. Prabhat uh, gets and, out of the technical issue. And can you on the side explain? Uh, try and get uh, solve the problem. Somebody can call him. Yes, we could do that. Uh, uh, Meola, uh, could you just call Mr. Prabhat and check whether what the problem is? Sure, sir. Just a minute. I'll get that. Uh, Graydon, can you just yes. uh, switch Good on your morning. Uh, Good morning. Good you morning. Good morning. Video, you could just switch on. Well, I uh, would definitely agree with Chef Bali and uh, Ms. Sharisha. As far as opening up of our hotels is concerned, our priority is to focus on the well-being of our ladies and gentlemen or our associates. Uh, because for now, their most important concern is about self-security and at the same time, uh, no doubt about it, devoting their uh, service um, to our guests. So um, coming up with a constructive plan of assurance um, to ensure that their mindset uh, is at ease and making them feel comfortable is the need of the hour. And then gradually over the period of time, it would be about looking at um, welcoming our guests uh, back to the hotel. 
Uh, Braden, what are the major challenges uh, that you would face, especially for a new hotel like Ritz Carlton in Pune, uh, new operations in Pune, uh, when you have just uh, started business uh, almost uh, more than about six months back? So, what are the challenges that you uh, you probably would face in the near future before well, you open in, up? Yes. Well, in my opinion, uh, since the time we opened up the hotel, um, we did open it strongly. and uh, was happy to see positive reviews from our guests um especially from even our competitive hotels around the vicinity so i think um we have already built a sense of goodwill and um top notch service to our guests but again the idea of sustaining that because the whole idea of luxury is changing or has changed right um right. luxury hotels have always been <clears throat> um extremely cautious about processes uh and structures and operations but now it would be more of making the intangible tangible and ensuring that right from every touch point for guests um they it is it is true to it is uh, true to believe uh because they can see the efforts that have been taken by uh, the management and by the staff so um on that note um it is important first that all of our ladies and gentlemen are trained they understand um the criticality of um what is in stake especially for pune and maharashtra uh, considering the number of cases uh, rising um so the need for the r is to not only train um our staff but at the same time to ensure that there's consistency in quality okay thank you gordon we'll just check uh, mr prabhat is audible now uh, what do you mr prabhat No, no, that's still the problem, Mr. Prabhat. No, you are not audible. Uh, okay. Uh, my next question uh, would uh, would uh, be to Chef Bali. Uh, Chef Bali, you are not seen on the screen. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am uh, there. Uh, yes. Yes, Chef. So especially uh, with the I, food, right, right, Chef. Especially for the food production department, uh, which is also a very important department because the food is the essential commodity for everyone. Right. So how do you how do you foresee changes that are going to happen in the current SOPs of hotels, and what are the different safety and precautionary operations protocol uh, you would plan to implement in the food production department, especially in the near future? so you know uh, we've always like across the hotel chains in india and abroad i think we've always been very focused on uh, food safety right um, in certain hotels we also have food safety management systems like iso 22000 uh, and especially talking about flight services you know that are uh, at the zenith of you know food safety but i think now with this pandemic and you know uh, um, you know some uh, times such as these i think we really now have to go one step above and we need to almost think like having a a safety management system a hygiene management system which probably exists in an operation theater you know so we okay. never had those levels of hygiene but i think now is the time that we have to look at those levels of hygiene which exist in an operation theater because here i think uh, you know uh, we never dealt with um, uh, at at our workplace we never dealt with a death of somebody arising due to um, you know food safety issues but i think uh, now in these times uh, we as educationist uh, colleges entertainers food industry i think it is now going to face eventually these kind of stuff uh, where pandemic these uh, like these can really cause a threat to the human um, workforce and that is the reason why we need to be just more strict i think everything will have to change right from the suppliers right. so you know we have to look at both the entries we have to look at getting the guest from the airport into our hotel and we have to look at getting the supplies getting the employees from the heart of the house you know so we have to look at actually right. both the parts now so when it comes to picking right. up the guest from the airport we must look at the first control point you know when we pick up the guest what are we going to do in the car uh, how is the guest going to come to the lobby you know how many people are going to be in future will there be any existence of lobby i don't know you know because a lot of things are changing uh, most of us i mean all of us are facing this for the first time in their lives so many of the senior managers also do not have an answer to this because each unfolding day it's it's giving us new challenges throwing challenges at our face but i think considering the situation which is now i think we have to look at all the processes 
even at a car maybe you know there's a glass shield between the chauffeur and the and the guest you know uh, mm-hmm. something like that to that level and you know maybe maybe on the on the on the television screen a uh, entire thing playing about you know in an animation style of what we are doing back at the hotel to ensure that you know your stay is safe with us uh, then i think similarly to the employees area is to say how we are getting employees in are they coming in staggered we are looking at our cafeterias you know uh, break timings how many people we would have in cafeteria at one point in time what about parking lot you know so there are so many control points i think we all need to in our own workplaces need to look at each control point that is there which is an entry or an exit into the hotel and formulate new sops you know some of the sops right. were already there but i think lot of new sops will have to be created i think with the food per se i think more of in room dining is going to really take up big time because restaurants you will have to rearrange the restaurant in such a way that there is social distancing uh, we cannot afford to have cold buffets maybe you know we cannot have lot of buffets food sitting there so maybe lot of live counters we cannot have large banquets you know maybe maybe a hall which can accommodate otherwise 400 people now you could take only not more than 100 people because you need to have that kind of social distancing um your setups mm-hmm. in the banquets are going to change um your menus are going to get shortened because you know if you see that 90% of the product is all imported and the import regulations and you know ingredients coming into our country it's going to be a big uh, you know the airlines and cargo flying even if they do i think they'll be far more expensive but otherwise mm-hmm. i think now is the time we will go to our local produce we will develop our local farmers so i really see also this as a boon in disguise you know so like i said everything happens mm-hmm. for good and i'm sure we we can already see some good you know 15 days ago i saw a rainbow i mean my child hadn't seen a rainbow uh, in last so Very many true. years but you know that uh, there's less traffic on the road so i'm an avid cyclist uh, i've started cycling from last two days and you know i can't tell you the air quality which is there which is so amazing so yes there are a lot of things which are happening i think we do not need to be in the fear zone we need to come into a learning zone and then also into the growth zone and find you know uh, ways to tackle this because human mankind has overcome so many things in the past whether it was nagasaki hiroshima bombing whether it was world war whether it was fine flu yeah i agree something wasn't as crucial as this one but i'm sure as human mankind as a race we will overcome this for sure uh, chef just a small supplementary question to this uh, yes uh, in the current situation do you feel like uh, the control bodies like fssci or fda would have to yes. revamp their norms uh, because their norms are quite obsolete now uh, especially yes. after this covid 19 pandemic and how do you see the, all this happening you know I, i think what fssci would have done in food safety it would have taken couple of more years for india to come up to the levels of international hygiene and standards but i'm very happy with this you know in last 40 days i think even the even the maids or the or the rickshaw wala or the vegetable vendors have understood the importance of washing hands wearing gloves wearing masks so i i think india is now ready because we now understand the effects of health hygiene and safety i think it will be easier for fssa now to drill down you know uh, to the lowest denominator whether it's a street hawker to say that it's important now that you follow that hygiene rule because gone are the times when we would go to a golgappa pani puri wala and you know make a joke about it that oh if he's wearing gloves then where is the taste going to come from but i think now people are not <laughs> going to run after tasty food they're going to go after uh, you know those establishments which are actually taking care of health hygiene safety so yes i think i fssci now has to be really strict um, you know when it lays down ru- lays down rules people have to follow it and there'll be heavy thrifty punishments on the same thank you chef i'll come back to you again uh, my next question is uh, to swisha uh, yes. swisha you you are into learning and development and whatever strategies uh, are adopted by uh, the hotel management you will have to percolate it down to the grassroots level people so my question is that how how do you plan to have elevated processes and team member team member training programs uh, for better safety and stay of the guests and do you plan to partner with external agencies who are specialized in hygiene and safety products for such kind of training program so how do you take this further so let me break this up into a couple of uh, responses uh, the first one being that yes uh, there's been enough and more thinking around how our processes need to dramatically change yes because uh, everything about hospitality business is such that you know it is high touch high contact 
So I don't mean to say physical touch, but it is so much about being there for your guests and constantly uh, pampering them. And that means that you're always providing them with some kind of tangibles in the physical aspects, which probably you can't do away with. It seems to be the most critical thing about our business. Yeah. And now what I think uh, has happened is that everybody's had to go back to the drawing book and say, what is it that is going to, um, how is it that we are able to, in our context, demonstrate Tajness without really compromising in, on the warmth and sincere care, and yet being able to manage all of this uh, in the parameters of social distancing and health hygiene and safety standards, which are being laid down. So it's a huge exercise because it's actually more, uh, um, more than just being driven by guidelines which are being released by multiple uh, bodies which are uh, concerned about health and safety, I think it's also a little bit of a mental exercise because people need to sit back and realize that we're actually running a hotel business. Yeah? So it's not a hospital, um, it's not an airport, it's a hotel business. So we need to be able to demonstrate care, concern, sincerity, warmth, and joy of being in a hotel, even in uh, these certain circumstances. So I think uh, much uh, of the challenge has actually been taken up by many of our operational leaders also, because they forced to think very, very differently. And I'm really glad that everybody is really stretching their boundaries in terms of coming up with unique and innovative ways of how is it that we make the um, customer who's our guest uh, experience the uh, Tajness in spite of all these restrictions. So that kind of work has happened. And I think somewhere uh, we have uh, come down to some brass tacks of what are the changes that we need to do in our service design. Yes, we've, we've got a lot of, uh, I think the L&D team has done an outstanding job with us and people have burned the midnight oil to put uh, almost eight to nine modules together for different uh, departments. We have something called a back to work in the new normal world, which has been put together for all the departments and everybody realizes it's got three parts to that module. So the thought process is that uh, Either uh, before people come to work, uh, it's through um, our uh, internal outlook meetings that we are going to be using that everybody gets trained. And uh, depending upon when they actually come into work on day one, even before they hit the floor or uh, they pick up their uniform, they actually have a little bit of a learning that this is the new normal is going to be so the first part being that you know what uh, we're really glad that you're able, you have been able to make it here because like as chef bali mentioned there are a lot of anxieties that people themselves have about you know am i really doing the right thing am i exposing myself am i exposing my family by really stepping out of the house so there are uh, anxieties and concerns that uh, people have who work with us also so it's important that we put that to rest so our first part of the training really focuses on them and uh, how is it that the hotel is prepared to make sure that uh, we are uh, in a position to be able to ensure everybody's health and safety and how is it that each employee themselves now that they are at work becomes responsible for everyone's health and safety in, uh, by themselves also. That's the first part. The second part completely focuses on how is it that the standards in the front of the house have dramatically changed and uh, how is it that they will probably have to execute it. And the third part being uh, frequently asked questions. So being in front of the guest means that the guest is going to ask all kinds of questions, uh, not necessarily associated to your department. It is just about a sense of feeling and how the organization is dealing with it. So how do you want to kind of project yourselves? So yes, we are doing a lot of stuff. Uh, it's not easy, but uh, I think it's a new challenge. And I, I see a great sense of enthusiasm amongst everyone who works with hotels uh, to want to do this differently, because I suppose all of us see that we are in a very tough spot. And um, if nothing else, it has got every piece together that we want to make this business a success now going forward, because it's a very tough time for all of us. So that's the first part that I answered. The second one being about are we tying up with anybody? Yes, we work very closely with uh, quite a few partners and diversity being one of them. Uh, I, I'm not sure. So what has happened is that I think uh, there is a 
there is there might be a need maybe at a later point in time for us to be able to explore the possibility of some kind of an external affirmation or a validation uh, to be able to see that you know the processes that we have put in place are actually uh, sufficient enough to have mitigated all risks so i'm not talking only from the perspective of hygiene so why do you have asked me the question from a hygiene perspective I think there is more than hygiene that needs to be kind of taken uh, into consideration. So whether it is picking up a guest from an airport and what kind of a barrier do you have between the chauffeur and uh, uh, the guest to uh, how do you kind of do a check-in? There are lots of control points and all these control points probably need to be seen from a third person perspective, more from a risk mitigation perspective to see if this is something which is actually uh, ensure that all risks have been mitigated. Yeah, so we are working with a few people to see how we can kind of put this in place. A third person uh, is definitely important. Uh, just a little supplement to this. Uh, globally, Hilton has partnered with Rickett Benson and Mayo Clinic for a Clean Stay initiative. So they've launched this Clean Stay initiative, yeah. uh, wherein, wherein uh, the concept is basically to convert the aesthetically clean room concept into a clinically clean room concept because that yeah. would be the need of the R. Of course, aesthetically, they have to look good, but at the same time, they have to be clinically safe. So in such, uh, do you have such kind of uh, things happening in Indian hospitality industry? Uh, wherein, no, it, uh, uh, yeah, actually, Milind, if you realize, everybody right from the ITC to the Accord to uh, Starwood, everybody is tied up with uh, one partner or the other. So it's not like these kind of tie-ups are not happening. I think uh, it depends on when you want to kind of uh, launch something like this and uh, what is the scope with which you want to launch it. Is it only going to be from a hygiene perspective or is it going to be from a risk mitigation perspective? Right. Uh, just a quick check if Mr. Prabhat is audible now. Uh, Mr. Prabhat is still not audible. I don't know if his mic is muted. No, his mic is not muted, actually. Uh, there's okay. some problem at his uh, end, uh, in, his, in a mic or something. Hmm. Uh, Meola, if you could just... I believe uh, there's something a problem over here. Uh, so, sir, 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 I think you were audible for a moment. Uh, Melinsa is trying to also get through from the mobile, so we'll just take a minute. Yeah, we could, yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. Till then, I will uh, move on to Graydon. Uh, Graydon, I just want to understand uh, from you. We uh, we we know, we are aware that uh, Marriott International, especially Ritz Carlton in Pune, is uh, running a pilot project for Marriott International uh, for this post COVID ninety one pandemic. So, could you throw some more light on that? Yes, Melissa. So what we did was we got in touch with uh, Diverse, where we were closely associated with and working with and found out solutions and ways of how we can be more detailed with our operations as far as uh, the hygiene point of view is concerned. More than that, it is also about partnering with our ladies and gentlemen and brainstorming together as far as processes are concerned. So what we did is we got uh, together with each of our team members and um, began looking or revising our um, LSOPs on the uh, journey moments of guests, on how easy um, or how effective it is uh, going to be for uh, them to change. Can you hear me now? Changing. Yes. Yes, great. So um, we did come up with this program where, again, the initiative was to look after our associates' well-being and at the same time uh, with our guests. So it, is all, it was all about redefining standards, um, norms, the new norms, uh, that, which is now back in place, and um, ensuring that all our uh, associates before coming in on, on board are well acquainted with these changes for them to feel comfortable. And then again, uh, before we could open our doors for guests, uh, we make them feel comfortable to answer to all uh, those questions that our guests have. So it's more about looking at um, encouraging guests about you know, self-check-ins by using the, their mobile phone, um, um, like what uh, Mr. Kali mentioned about the ULV sprays and automizing um, these in guest rooms. Uh, so all of these uh, different 
um, changes of, if I could say, the evolution of um, hospitality with uh, the outbreak of uh, COVID-19 um, has made us come up with this program of Take Care. Okay. Uh, Graydon, one more just supplement to this. Uh, I just wanted to know when I saw this, uh, that uh, Merit International has only launched this program in Aero City in Delhi, I believe, and which started in Pune. Yes. Graydon, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Melan. Yeah. So, so any specific reason why to choose these two brands and these two cities when, when, uh, when we know that the risk in Pune is a comparatively newer property? Well, in fact, even this was one of the questions which we also had asked. But uh, the idea being is uh, we had already got into this exercise um, during the time of uh, the lockdown. Um, so we had already spoken to our teams and we were working on this program. So I um, believe when the area team um, popped up this question to ask about what our hotel is doing is that when we already had this plan uh, of action in place. Um, and also considering the fact that um, the areas in the country, mainly being Delhi and Maharashtra, Mumbai or Pune, being mostly affected, it was a concern for us from day one uh, on how do we get uh, things well streamed. Fine. Okay. Thank you, Gregor. I'll come back to you soon. Uh, Mr. Prabhat, uh, can you just try with the audio? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah we are very loud and clear. <laughs> But there is a slight echo which is coming through, I think, so. Now? Please keep the phone and the laptop separate. Yeah. I think you can put the laptop on mute if you're operating from your phone. Yeah, that's what I will do. First of all, I'll check it out first. We are getting an echo. Better? Uh, it's on mute now. No, I think so. You, uh, you can just log out from the laptop because your laptop is showing mute and probably you're uh, logged in on your mobile as well. Maybe that could... I believe now it's better? Yes. Now it's much better. Now it's much better. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, Mr. Prabhat, uh, we just missed just on your uh, first perception, you know. How do you... Just so minute. I can't hear you now. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible now. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Prabhat, we missed your perception in, on the first question. Uh, how do you see this industry coming out of this uh, pandemic, uh, especially uh, in a country like Qatar, where you belong to, uh, when you're working currently? How, how do you see things working differently in Qatar? See, things are not working differently anywhere. Everybody's on the same boat, little bit somebody is little ahead or somebody is little behind. And everybody is finding this uh, new persona which is coming out. And it is a hit and run case right now for everybody. Everybody trying something or the other. One time we find like in a medical, uh, chloroquine was very fine. Then it was a plasma therapy. The same goes for the hospitality also when it starts to work on. Uh, initially now, earlier when you are in a five star, there was a certain decorum which you have to follow it up. But now wearing a gloves or a mask is a normal. Initially when it started it up, even the hotels were a little bit... Uh, in, in, in a mix that whether it, the reception, we should wear a mask or what, what will be the guest experience for the gloves. But now it is in to wear it up. Now even coming up with the plexiglass in the front of the reception or the floor marks so that guests can be in a queue like an airport. Uh, so gradually the things are moving it out. We are expecting that great, gradually the staycation will start it up. The first, we are targeting the people 18 to 35, which are a little bit more vulnerable to this COVID-19, they will be one who will start moving in the market. So if they will start moving, so the whole market segment will also be changed because of initially the business clientele as in Qatar, we have a target of the guests which are mostly 35 to 50, the business clientele, whereas the 18 to 35 will be the millennials. So we have to have a look on them and to how we can run a safe, responsible hospitality sector for them because Initially, when we all are starting it up, it will be very, very an asset test for hospitality to make a belief and trust in the market that we are safe and people can do visit us. Right. Uh, Prabhat, since you're representing the entire housekeeping fraternity of the industry, uh, this is one question to you. Uh, I believe that the housekeeping department is going to become the frontline warriors to fight this uh, pandemic. Am I audible? 
Yeah, yeah, you are, you are. Yeah, sure. So, so I just want to know from you, I, I just spoke to Sirisha on this, that how do you see the paradigm change uh, or paradigm shift from aesthetically clean rooms from to clinically clean rooms where you can have safe stay for the guests, uh, especially when we are moving out of this uh, pandemic? Very true. And this is uh, one of the very, very interesting topic, which the housekeeping fraternity is also discussing. Initially, the time when the person is coming or being hired, and if the HR is taking an interview for a potential, but not very good for the FNB or front office, they used to dump into the housekeeping. Or the person is good, he can learn it up. So housekeeping was no man's job. Or a person in an interview tells, I know how to do an aesthetic cleaning, or I know how the interior decor. I help my mother in decorating the house is a fine for housekeeping. But now the scenario is changed. You have to have a technically expert when you are hiring. You should know what the sanitizer is. You should know what the difference between a cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfection is. You have to know, know what is the proper combination of the chemicals is, what is PP is. So now the total scenario for the housekeeping will be changed because now initially, now if you will see even on the most of the social media or on the LinkedIn where the people are promoting their properties, rather than a reception with the background, uh, background of the flowers, is an attendant disinfecting a table or a drawer. So the mindset of the people are much more how safe you are rather than how decorative or luxury you are. So that is a place where it is taking a big change. And with the current existing, a lot of training to the people, explaining to them why, what, and where, and they have to get it understand on the cleaning things, like when we are talking about a sneeze or a cough, a sneeze when you do, it takes 30,000 or plus droplets out at the speed of 50 kilometers per hour. So it, and most of them are dropping it down, but still few are remain for a time in a air. So when you are cleaning a WC in a public area, it doesn't require that somebody has used it out and out and you are going to clear it up because you can be at the time in the danger. So you have, those are the things which you have to explain a little bit and the train the team colleagues that how and when they have to clear, they have to be much more into those parts for them. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Prabhat. My next uh, question is to Chef Bali. Uh, Chef, you've already covered uh, some part of my question in your earlier talk. But I just want to understand a little more uh, some clear perception on you on a couple of things. Uh, first thing yes. is that we all know that this current change uh, situation has probably forced people to change their eating habits. It could be it could be from going from non-vegetarian to food for uh, to vegetarian or vegan food for that matter. Right. It could be uh, it could be going from uh, buffets to EDH or a la carte menu. Or, or it could be moving on to the home delivery option because uh, people are more comfortable now to get food delivered uh, at, at home right. delivery. Right. So as hotels, as hotels, how do you see uh, they changing these systems gradually towards what people want? So I think we are already started to change. A uh, lot of five-star hotels have entered into uh, home deliveries. Uh, so I think, again, it's, it's, it's a good thing that, you know, uh, now I'm happy that, you know, somehow there'll be a lot of competition um, and people will be challenged to get unique products out really. So it's going to change the f &B scenario of our company. But yes, going, I think the home delivery route, et cetera, I think that is something which will happen. Um, I think even in the hotels per se, you know, like I said that your menus now will not be about quantity, but I think quality, right. uh, you will have to shorten down your menus. You cannot have that, you know, unnecessary spreads, which were just there. Um, even small, small things like accompaniments on the tables, you know, like you yeah, keep a salt, pepper, cruet. I think everything has to be bought when the guest is seated and doesn't have to be a part of the, you know, the table accompaniments now. So like that, I right. think a lot of things are in for change. Definitely. A uh, lot of packaged foods, a lot of, you know, packed foods like airline caterings, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that, that all is there. And I think it's already started. Right. Uh, chef, normally uh, in any particular hotel, uh, the major f &B revenue comes through banquets. Right. Uh, and banquet is typically with buffet food. Uh, that is what mm. visually happens in the Indian hotel. Industry. So how do you see a change happening there 
at the same time how do we retain banquet operations or banquet clientele so again like you know it's about you know i would i would say for example airlines you know when the airlines will start i think they will have to kind of uh, probably you know redesign their aeroplanes in a way that you know there's an individual cabin for each passenger like you would have in a business class you know or or have seats removed in such a way that you know there's a social distancing in the airplanes but all this is going to make things expensive uh, and airlines was anyway initially for rich and elite uh, so i think that is what about the hotels um, uh, you know will be in the terms of scenario of banquets uh, that you know it will become expensive because uh, now i think you can't afford to really do that kind of uh, business and then when we are talking about this i think we are talking about maybe year from now definitely so i think year from now we can manage uh, but again um, yeah i think even when we do kind of banqueting i think more focus has to be on live stations more things have to be you know freshly cooked and served um, you can't have unnecessary spreads just to fill up the buffet you know so gone are the days and i'm really happy about it you know because one buffet is one of the things that you see uh, you know it's painful to see the food being wasted there after end of every right. meal i mean you could really feed 50 more people and like we are seeing right. now when people are not getting enough to eat we say that how we used to actually waste so much of food back in hotels correct correct uh sirisha i would like to ask you one question uh first of all i would just like like to share uh, one small funny thing what uh, chef also mentioned earlier that uh, the blessing in disguise is that we have become suddenly become a pollution free uh, world uh, and uh, i could clearly see uh, clearly see the northern line clear you so which means that, uh, <laughs> so which means that uh, the weather has become so pollution free okay, my question to you is two fold basically uh, my first question is uh, retaining talent in the industry since uh, mm-hmm. you are into learning and development that is going to be a big challenge especially with we have a lot of migrant uh, laborers uh, or migrant employees uh, in the hospitality industry so how do you retain them because all these migrant employees uh, have migrated or would migrate would like to migrate to their hometowns soon the lockdown period is, uh, is lifted so how do you see in retaining talented hotels that is my first question and second question is how do you train the people uh, who have had deep rooted customs in them uh, related to giving service to the guests so how do you change the perception and how do you train them in this particular situation okay so i'll take the first question um, it's about uh, retaining our talent and ensuring that we have the required workforce to be able to run our business in the first place so i'm in complete agreement with you mitin in fact we've already seen an exodus of on our frontline associates going back uh, to their hometowns and i think um, this will definitely be an issue in much uh, many of the larger cities like the metropolitan ones uh, bombay delhi etc where you have migrants who come into these larger cities and who are working in your frontline whether it be it security be it banquets kitchen stewarding and all the contractual workforce areas so we've already ex- we are, we have experienced it but i think um, one way to look at the situation is to say that is this going to last forever god forbid i think uh, we are going to look at uh, we are going, we're taking a stand saying that yes this might be a scenario for the next 6 months but ultimately people will also have to everyone will have to do something to earn their living so yes currently i think the kind of scenario that everybody is in uh, there is a certain sense of anxiety which has made everybody return to their homes because there is there is a sense of safety associated with homes uh, but i think once uh, things start to settle in a little bit once we have the post vaccine era which kind of come kicks into place uh, confidence will go up and people will start to travel back so i think in this current scenario more than uh, retaining uh, the workforce Uh, what is important is for us to be able to look into uh, look within our processes and say how is it that we realign our processes to build in efficiencies so that something which took us 10 steps to do in the erstwhile era takes us 5 steps to do so uh, i think it's a great time for us to create a leaner machine uh, hotels have always been overstaffed in especially luxury hotels we've always worked with a lot of people at everybody's beck and call that is very that is much of a requirement of all of us 
Indian hotels because we truly stand for hospitality. But to be able to make it leaner was probably a great way to operate. So I am actually, uh, I think one of our um, speakers earlier, I can't remember the name, I think Tanmay, who kind of took us through that Six Sigma piece. I think much of that needs to kind of kick into place, uh, not necessarily from a Six Sigma perspective, but definitely from a perspective of building in far greater efficiencies to to do the job better. And I think whenever this, the, the thing settles in, workforce will always get back because uh, there is a sense of uh, security about working with hotels also. Uh, you know that, you know, it's a it's a good place to be. Uh, it's become a little bit like a family for a lot of people who actually work here. So we'll, we'll see how it plays uh, out probably uh, in, the, in the near future. The second part is about, uh, Milan, would you just repeat that question? It's about training or how would you train? How would you, how would you train the association, you know, so that uh, they have better understanding yeah. of the situation? Yeah, so uh, I think there is so much communication definitely happening about this current situation. Everybody has more than required information about what this pandemic is doing to the entire world. So I think, uh, uh, there is a there is a huge amount of um, understanding of what is the scare surrounding the situation and how each one of us has to play such a large role in it. Having said that, I think from a hotel perspective, yes, uh, we have to do a lot of detailed drill down, uh, whether it is through multiple different technologies that we put in place before people come in, after they come in, and uh, also to make sure that everybody gets trained on the smallest of nuances. And uh, we are a people business, you train everybody. Uh, uh, it's important that everybody definitely always applies it because uh, in the current scenario, we can't have one single lapse. One lapse by one right. person means that, you know, we have one positive tested person and that would mean that the hotel can go in a lockdown situation. So, yes, it's going to be a little bit of an effort and I think somewhere uh, they, it should kind of tie in with some kind of progressive consequence management also so that everybody realizes that, you know, uh, that, you know, life is back to normal. Life is going to be dramatically different even once we come back to work because uh, we won't be able to enjoy our tea or coffee break around the pantry area like we used to do in the work, first while time. And that's going to be tough. I think we'll have to have some kind of, how do you say, ask monitors everywhere who make sure that, you know, absolutely no rules are uh, and at least if we do something like this for the first two, three, four months, I think it's become a little bit of a way of life. I think I've gotten so used to kind of walking True. out, not without a mask. Yeah, uh, it, it seemed highly uncomfortable uh, initially. But now I think when I step out, it's just become a part of my diet. So I think we'll, we'll have to kind of find ways and means. So training will have to play a very, very large role in this particular space. I would also like to extend this question to uh, Prabhat, uh, especially with housekeeping, uh, when we all know that housekeeping has a lot of contractual labor. Uh, also, they are relying on uh, their processes being outsourced. And these outsourced people also rely on contractual labor. So uh, we all foresee a lot of problems in uh, getting labor or getting employees uh, to work at such positions. And housekeeping being a soul of the industry wherein uh, a lot of things are reliant on the labor of housekeeping. How do you see uh, this taking shape in the near future? Uh, working conditions a little bit uh, vary as compared to the India to in the Middle East. Most of the time when the people are coming to us, they all are working under our uh, contract. So they are on our visa. So most of the employees are on our visa. The other contractual jobs, which we get it done from the other companies, they are the licensed companies. So those companies, again, what we started now, the time when this pandemic started it up, we contacted them. We have identified what are the steps they are taking, what are the standards they are following. If they are following the guidelines of the Qatar uh, tourism, they are following the guidelines of the health ministry and so on. If they are fine, we are taking them up. There, there is a place where they have locked down for a while. So we are not getting in done the people from there, but the people who are accessible to us, who can come to us, we are working with them. And mostly multitasking is the key right now as the occupancies are not very high. So we are taking the talents which are there for the other departments, like the chef said, most of the outlets are closed, but the people are with us. They are on our visa, they are staying with us. So we are doing a multitasking with them and getting things done. 
just one more thing is how do you see this uh, cross border or uh, globally how do you see migration of uh, employees happening you know especially mobility of uh, workers cross border into cross international borders uh, see in, in initially uh, for the time being nobody will be ready to move out unless and until there is any radical changes in their departments or in their properties or their countries everybody is little bit positive till each time that might be things will change if it doesn't change if the company cut down the people if the company plan it out to retrench something then the scenario will be a different one but currently nobody is getting it down because it's not an easy job to retain again get again the staff because it's a very lengthy process it takes one to three months or four months to hire one candidate so right now there can be a people who can be on a break a people can be on or their annual vacation getting it up locally but they are not getting it out and right now for the last three months the airports of the most of the areas are closed so nobody can even if they want right. to leave they can't leave it out right uh, shempali i think uh, shempali had requested that he would want to log out because he has a class uh, uh, yes I have, I have another class waiting it was at 12 o'clock right. sorry i'm in if session just, from 9 to 6 can... every day <laughs> i understand completely if you were to just make a concluding statement uh, before you log out uh, so I, I think we all need to stay brave in these times. Um, uh, we need to, like I said, you know, there are three zones in our life. There's a fear zone, there is a knowledge zone, and I think there's a growth zone. I think, uh, you know, so there are certain behaviors that we exhibit in each zones. So I think if you're in the fear zone, then, you know, you're kind of trying to go uh, shopping outside and try to fill up your groceries and, you know, outrightly buy things and, um, you're trying to spread messages, whatever come your way. So there are many attributes towards that. I think in the knowledge one, you at least make a peace with that. Uh, you understand what's happening. You become more calm and composed. But I think the growth zone is the next level where I think, you know, uh, where you start sharing things with others, uh, where you make a difference to people's lives. So I think all the students also who are attending this, I'm sure you all are great in one way or the other, that you, you know, somebody is great in account, somebody is great in F&B service. A peer-to-peer -peer learning is very important. I think you should hold individual Zoom conferences. You should take an initiative and say, I'm going to do a class on accounts for one hour every day. Whoever wishes to log in, this is the thing. You know, and if you learn from each other, you know, constantly, you will be busy at least three to four hours in a day. Uh, otherwise, trust me, I think you're all on just social media and doing stuff, uh, which I don't know how important that is, but I leave that up to you. Um, and I think there were so many lovely things that you wanted to do in your lifespan, but you always were cribbing about that you don't have time. So I think if you don't do it now, it's only a lack of discipline. It's not a lack of time anymore. Um, so anyway, sorry, I, I keep giving gyan to people, so I, I, I can't hold myself. Uh, but, but yeah, I think that is the thing, peer-to-peer -peer learning, uh, understanding various ways. I mean, watch Netflix series. I have a whole list of Netflix series with me, like, you know, uh, salt, acid, fat, uh, heat, and there's so many amazing ones. Uh, so whichever students are listening can follow me on my Insta Instagram account. Chef Bali is my handle. So I do a lot of live web sessions with Michelin star chefs and all that. So there'll be a great learning. That's all I can say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Chef, for joining us. Thank you. And uh, Thank you. we definitely appreciate your efforts and... Uh... Uh, and insight that you've given us. Uh, sometime Thank we will you. definitely see you in our college. Uh, definitely. We we'll want you to come to our college and address our students yes. as well. Because sure. obviously face-to-face -face interaction is uh, yes. we're used to that. So yeah. thank you so, so much, Chef, for thank joining you. us and, and thank sharing you so your much. with us. Thank, thank you so you. much. Take thank care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Chef. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bye -bye. Yes. Take care, Chef. Okay, we have a couple of questions uh, from the participants. Uh, one of the questions probably Prabhat uh, could address to this question. Uh, people feel that uh, a lot of cost is going to get incurred uh, in maintaining the hygiene and sanitation standards. So whether this cost would eventually be charged to the guests, whether the, whether we are going to increase the room rates, uh, wherein the cost would be probably charged from the guests. So how is it going to happen? Uh, very good question. And this is one of the most uh, discussion right now, which is going on. And right now, this is the right time. I believe most of the housekeepers are facing it up that the first point where your finance is asking you to redo your man manning because one of the biggest thing is your manning, the biggest expenses in housekeeping. So when they are asking you about your manning, that is the same time you have to forecast on your expenses because your expenses are not going to be the same what used to be earlier. 
it's not only the chemicals it is on our ppe it is on the gas supplies and even the usage now in the rooms for example that all dry amenities how you are going to use it up is it will be for a one time use and throw or you will have a separate chamber where you will keep it up again untouched for a while for 24 hours or 48 hours and then again you will use it up what will be your standard and what will be the consumption your mini bar if it is under housekeeping again what are the new mantra to work it out if the cost of the mini bar is in your room rate or you will have an option to the room guest rooms with a mini bar without mini bar with the this pricings you know so these are the things which are coming up and yes to yield the right price because now things won't be cheap as the chef bali said now there will be no uh, share we care no recycle it will be reduced than reuse so Right. If the company is coming now, the two individual of the same company won't like to have staying in the same room on a twin beds, rather than they want a one single bed. So the expenses will be different, but it will be go high. And this is the time when the housekeeper has to put a strong feet and explain to the management what are the expenses which are coming up in the time and how to get it includes in the room rates because your cleaning consumption, your guest supply consumption, your chemicals, your pest control, a lot of things are going to be on a higher rate. So those are the things which you have to keep in mind. The same applies for your linen and all in the new standards, whether it's a luxury to provide a room of four bath towel or to a fine and rest will be on call. Or if a right. guest is going out, you are going to uh, throw them out for wash again or an extra pillow. So those are the things which again is like a reinventing a wheel and which in a gradual time we all will learn. But yes, a housekeeper definitely plays a vital role in that to explain to the management, the general manager and the financial controller that these, I can foresee the expenses, which we have to keep in consideration when we are putting a room rate with the revenue director. Thank you. I'll ask the last question to Graydon before I open the forum for the audience to ask their questions. Uh, uh, Graydon, I just want to ask you one thing. Uh, when, I, when I saw your designation as quality uh, manager, uh, this is a new concept, especially in the service industry. Uh, this is a very old and known concept in manufacturing industry. How do you take this concept uh, uh, further in hospitality industry? And how do you see uh, the change of roles uh, between operational people and quality control people? Well, Melind, um, right from the very beginning, the Ritz-Carlton Hotels has always had a quality manager in place. So the role of the quality manager was, again, more or less to look into processes that have already been laid down by the hotel and to ensure and see that the operations are systematically followed. And at the same time, uh, with reference to brand um, as what the Ritz-Carlton uh, calls for. But now with this trend or change in the industry, quality is definitely going to be extremely important because um, there are going to be standards that every department um, would be expected to follow, more or less like even following of a checklist. Sometimes most of the hotels may just have a checklist and have it ticked off because it has it is part of their job uh, role or responsibility. But now logging in um, movements like from a guest room, um, areas that have been sanitized, processes, all this is going to be extremely important for every hotel to look uh, closely at. From the hygiene point of view, um, yes, it is going to be more of heart of the house, front of the house, as well as food and beverage um, areas are concerned. So it is definitely going to be hand uh, and glove with both of these roles where hotels would need to um, determine and understand what of these operational expectations are to be followed and um, how is it going to be checked um, systematically on a regular basis. So um, it is, it is, you are right that most of the hotels are looking at um, revamping this role. Um, they used to say that quality and training was, you know, part and parcel, but now um, training would be definitely a separate role and quality again would be a separate role to look at. Now I open this forum for uh, questions from the audience. Uh, Sundar, if you could take a few questions from uh, the audience of uh, YouTube also, we could ask these questions to the panelists here. 
We already have one question here, uh, which probably uh, Prabhat would be able to address this. How do we differentiate between the carriers uh, from guest's point of view, the carriers of Corona and the people who are infected? Sometimes it becomes very difficult uh, to uh, to analyze the symptoms. And uh, so what is the mechanism in place? See, currently there is no mechanism if you will talk about for a walking guest. The precautions, what we can get it done, the persons who are coming to us, like in the uh, state of Qatar, if somebody is coming from overseas, we check it out. What was the last day of his travel or travel history? If they were the person was locally or here, the time when they are coming, their temperature. Now the coming up is the immunity pass. So immunity pass is something the time when you are checking in, you just do the barcode. We can find out your temperature. We can find it out your other histories. That is something which we can get it done. But again, you can't have a fix and find that you can find it out that the person is affected with a Corona because even the doctors can't find it out for the several times that the person right. is infected. So, but the thing is the precautions and precautions are something which we can get it done and we can take it out. So the time of the arrival of the guest and making a distance and following the proper PPE and all the hygiene procedures can get rid of it or can be a little bit exempted from it. But right now, as there is a no medicine, so there is a no a rule for that. Okay. Unless and I until a person has been, unless and until a person has been identified, testified himself. Right. That's true. That's very true. I think I think the question has been answered uh, there. We could have some a couple of more questions on the chat. Yeah, there is one question. How credit system will be changed? Uh, will be changed for housekeeping costs. Uh, now housekeeping uh, become much more uh, into sanitization. That is one of the questions that we've got. Uh, I agree. Uh, yes. So again, when it comes to the credit system or a room allocation for the attendant, first of all, it all depends on the time motion study. So in the time motion right. study, we identify the <clears> property. <throat> what is the time a person, an average time of their team members will take to clear a room? Now, when it comes to, again, after the cleaning, disinfection, and sanitization. Now, for my property, we are developing a team which will do this process after the cleaning. So the room attendants are going to have the same time, but this disinfectant team of three, which are going to do, on an average, we have seen they take 12 to 15 minutes to get it done. So in mm -hmm. my manning, in the coming time, when we are going to reopen, we have to keep in time that what are the average checkouts and we have to release the room and what are the other attributes which we have to take in time. So these are the people who will be an additional on that. But whereas if right. any of the property where they say the room attendant has to do, then a housekeeper and they have to understand how much time it will take. And simultaneously in your eight working hours, which you do and one hour break, you have to cut it down in that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Mr. Kalkar, Dr. Kalkar, I want to ask a question here. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we wanted to have a view of a person from a non-hospitality person. So I just wanted to have a view from a you as a beneficiary of the services of hotel industry. How do you see things moving further? Dr. Kalkar. Dr. Kalkar, can you hear me? Ha, ha, can you repeat? Yeah, I wanted to have a non-hospitality view on this. So you have been a beneficiary of the hospitality services. So I yeah. just wanted to know your view on how you see things moving further in the hospitality industry and how soon you would be confident to go back to hotels and avail the services of restaurants or something like that. I think in the area where I stay, I think the uh, food delivery has already started mm -hmm. uh, in non-hotels, basically. People used to uh, cook up food and then they have a stall and homely food has been now been taken by the people. Still, people are more curious about how it has been prepared, who is the handler, what is the packing. I think it will take a time. For me, at least practically right. saying the next three to four months, I'll be more cautious about consuming. There is no street food for one year, but I think a good right. restaurant where hygiene and health is maintained, I think there is no issue about it. All I have how to say comfortable? Is, we have to start right. living with the COVID. That is more yeah, important. That's true. That's true. We can't eliminate COVID. So we have to learn uh, living with the COVID. We can't avoid everything 100%. Because when you are out for office work, you cannot avoid having food. 
one day or two a day is okay <laughs> but every time you cannot go back to home and have a lunch and come back absolutely yeah. and just uh, just one addition question to this uh, how comfortable uh, would you to attend any kind of a meetings in this five star hotels if at all uh, the hotel start and the meetings resume so I what is your time span uh, of comfort and i don't have issue because the the big hotels and good hotels they are already maintaining a always maintain good quality standards so health and hygiene is already maintained so i don't have a issue going next day also tomorrow also there is no issue because they already have some standards being maintained and they are more cautious about their quality and their brand name so i don't think only social distancing will have to maintain some distance between the chairs otherwise there is no issue because they already have i think, I think this was a very in, this was a very encouraging statement for the entire industry because uh, from guest point of view the guest is feeling comfortable and they are very confident about the services provided by all the leading brands so thank you so much uh, sir for sharing your insights Uh, we have one reason question, one minute oh. one minute one reason i am seeing yes, that yes. because the hospitality industry is a core industry and it gives the indirect employment to thousands of people around the supplier Absolutely. the producer the chain uh, the transporter the small people vendors and so many things are there so i think there are thousands Absolutely. and lakhs of people are dependent upon the running of uh, five star or good hotels so i think right. we have to consider all these things in a chain because we are not only uh, giving business to good hotels but we are giving business and we are uh, taking livelihood of lakhs of people who are regular suppliers workers supporters uh, they are aligned with the transport industry even a small transport industry vehicle providers so many things are one right. hotel must be having 100 and plus vendors so i think we must all see that they all survive in the process thank you absolutely sir because uh, i think uh, i think in the changing uh, times the economy would only grow if you have a lot of churning and i think hospitality industry would be the churning machine for uh, churning the economy all around you know because uh, they have yeah. to play a role of a churning machine to steer the economy in the right direction uh, we have one more question from the audience how hotel employees are going to create personalized experience while wearing mask or uh, taking precautions that way uh probably uh, if both prabhat and shirisha could address this yeah i don't mind taking that question actually yeah. because yeah. Um, uh, it's it's a myth to believe that uh, you need to be face to face with a guest to be able to create a personalized experience to start with yeah and i will actually take an example of housekeeping in the first place so usually housekeeping services are offered uh, in the absence of a guest in the room so they don't actually meet the guest but they create a lot of personalized experiences in the room so if if there is somebody who is traveling with two extra bags there will be an extra luggage rack already placed there if there is somebody who carries a lot of baggage there will be a extra shoe rack there will be extra hangers which will already be placed in the room somebody consumes additional water extra water already placed in the room somebody eats dark chocolate uh, and not white chocolate uh, the housekeeping associate will make sure that he keeps extra dark chocolate in the room so in my mind i don't think uh, being face to face with the customer being able to see uh, each other defines personalization or customization it is a lot of intangibles if you are able to understand the guest requirements and provide them uh, without the guest having to ask for it i think they will definitely see how interested somebody is uh, the, the associate is and the organization is to be able to create a personalized experience so i think it is quite agnostic to personal presence i think we have already overshot the time by almost about an half an hour so uh, if we could have any questions from the panelists or probably sonali ma'am uh, would like to ask the last question and then uh, we'll take a small poll i uh, actually a lot of questions being asked um, a lot of interviews happening on the tv and all of that but how do you keep your motivation up in this times when everything seems to be going down under uh i don't know it's a personal uh, i think it's it's each to themselves i think everybody has different motivations going and uh, look at it this way i think um, i i look at it as a much of a challenge it's very new we've all been working like we all have a little bit of experience behind ourselves a little over 15 years and um, while this is such a difficult situation it also presents us with uh, 
thinking dramatically differently, um, doing things which will probably put so many things in perspective for multiple others who work in our kind of business. I think motivation for each person are going to be very different. For me, it is uh, the motivation is that I am able to be useful for so many others in my business because I'm able to think through things slightly differently. So I guess each to their own and uh, yeah, Different people, it will be different. I do a lot of stuff myself and somebody told me that what's wrong with you? Why would you do the traditional learning stuff that you always do? This is the time that you should learn how to play poker, maybe. <laughs> so <laughs> that gives you joy and uh, keep uh, your spirits up and happy. I guess uh, that's the way to kind of look at it. Everything shall pass. You know, we've had tough times. We've had 26-11. We've had 9-11. We've, we've seen tough times, yeah? Everything passes, it will come back to normalcy and hopefully it will be a better world for everybody to kind of live in. Yeah. Okay, I think we have, uh, we have discussed on this particular issue and all the panelists have uh, contributed a lot to this. It has been a great knowledge sharing platform. Uh, all of us are new to this particular situation and definitely uh, we are just inching towards uh, normalcy to come in. So uh, I rest uh, today's uh, discussion on this and I request Dr. Sonali Jadav to support her vote of thanks. But before she begins, I'm just launching the feedback poll. So I request all the uh, participants on this uh, on this platform to just give your valuable feedback on this. Uh, Ma'am, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Milind. Uh, we see that there are a lot of changes that we need to adapt to and we need to come out of a comfort zone. So the irony of the thing is when the nature is at its best and we see flamingos everywhere and uh, we see dolphins coming near the coast and all of that, tourism is under lockdown. So that is one of the most unfortunate things. But uh, like uh, Chef said, Chef Parvinda, there's always a silver lining in everything that we do. So with this, uh, I hope all of you have enjoyed this seminar as much as I have listening to all the... Um, panelists who have been uh, very, very uh, given us different insights into how this is going to go forward. I take this opportunity to uh, thank our Dean, Dr. Parag Kalkar, for sparing the time to be here, as also uh, Mr. Nikhil Khanse, our uh, governing, uh, uh, governing council member. I thank all the panelists who are with us today, Tanay Zada, Mr. Nishan Kelly, Mr. Parvinder Bali, Sirisa Chandana, lovely having you here, ma'am. Prabhat Shukla, uh, we thought we were going to lose out on a lot of information, but finally we were able to get, you, get through to you. And of course, Graydon Rodericks, who has been my student, and so very proud to have you here, Graydon. Uh, I thank Milind for organizing this seminar and uh, moderating it. The entire organizing team uh, of our college who put uh, this together, and of course, all the participants uh, who have uh, patiently listened to what everybody had to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your kind words. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you all for joining. Thank you all for joining. And hope to see you soon on a similar platform, similar discussion platform. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Milin. Have a great, great and safe day ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you all.